It's the monastery live back back again, and don't don't call us a comeback because we never left. I am, as always, your 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 ever vi your ever vigilant, ever immaculate, and ever studious gaming monk. So you can just call me Milja. And with me are our good our good brother Doku, the flamboyant flyer himself, good brother Flare guy, and should be here in a should be here in a little while. Good brother Aaron, who is currently getting screwed over by his work harder than Ron Jeremy. And with oh. no oh. Oof. <sighs> so it's uh, it is August 5th, 2018. Um Monastery Live, as usual, part of Knack Jack Studios in 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 association with with everybody. So what a shit storm the last week has been, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a safe Yeah. The weather has been fairly has been fairly nice in the, in up in the monastery in in Minnesota. Ah. As as you can see the theme the theme this week is the boogeyman is or isn't living in your closet. And give me a moment I'm going to put up a bit of a tweet. Okay, Mildred, I've got my article up, so I can read that off when we get there. Well, I've got the article up on my end as, as well. All right, and so the, we can go over that together. Normally, normally, Aaron is the one who handles the Wendell's tweeting out that we that we go that we've gone live, but the, but um, this it. This is uh, this is going this is going to be an interesting day. So, it a couple of, a couple of notes to to take into account in uh, tabletop news. I have the I now have the preview version and the playtest version of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Fourth Edition, and the playtest version of Pathfinder Second Edition, respectively speaking. Um. From what I've been able to, see, the final version of uh, Warhammer Fourth Edition isn't out yet. That I don't think that's going to be out till September. I think they just wanted to throw a bone to people who have been waiting so long, and they also gave ah. me a little bit of a coupon for for pre-ordering. Even yeah, yeah, even though I pre-ordered quite a while ago, it's just a case of yeah, we were tr we were trying to have this out earlier in, by the by su by early summer, but shit got in the way, and Games Workshop was being Games Workshop. Mm hmm. So they so they said we're working as we're working as quick as we can. We're going to put a few freebies in, into the book. Um, the only problem I have with the current PDF is not being optimized very well and no bookmarks. Oh, which is all is always a pet peeve of mine when it comes to PDFs. Um, I'm willing to I'm willing to let it slide because this isn't the final version of it. Ah. Uh, as for the Pathfinder Second Edition playtest, I feel like I've gone back to 2008 because mm -hmm. I'm already in the minority with everybody hating the damn thing, but me. Now, ah. those of you who have been following my blog know that I've been covering the previews that they set up called Pathfinding. So the changes that they were going to be doing weren't too much of a were too much of a surprise for me. Mm -hmm. But apparent apparently. I'm I like I said I'm in the minority because I don't mind the changes. In fact, I think they did. Cert, I think they've done certain things better, like say organized feats, have a, have a proficiency set up instead of using traditional skills. Um, mm -hmm. the f because in my opinion D and D has never really been designed for a skill system the way other RPGs are. Ah, and going with going with this four degrees of proficiency i very much prefer also feats have a lot more importance and thank the lord they're properly organized this time let me guess they weren't organized in, in 1e no it was organized the same way it was organized in DD third edition that is to say ah. you know just put all the feats in one in one giant list alphabetically and have mm. ridiculous ass feet chains because we're still relying on 
that ivory tower bullshit design that Monty Cook has outright regretted that he did. Mm -hmm. But the big problem that some people have is that you have a resource called Resonance that's you that classes like the Alchemist will use for their alchemy, but is also used okay. when you're uh, when you have magic items on. You can use you mm -hmm. use it to equip it, and you use it to use magic item powers. Uh, I'm, and a lot of people were saying that because I didn't mind the changes that Pathfinder Second is doing, and um, Valerie, I Valerie, you're probably not watching this, but I gotta call out what you said to me specifically, that I like low magic campaigns. That is not true. If I did not like low magic campaigns, I would not consider Exalted one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I would not have Ars Magica sitting on my sitting on my desk, nor would I have nor would I have spoken highly about Slayer's D twenty. No, the problem ah. that I have is when me and in my experience, people who play a lot of mage based characters are the stingiest motherfuckers I have ever met at a table, because mm -hmm. you do anything, anything to give to give the non mages just a little bit of a boost. Or or take away the take away the caster's effects, or say that you can't use a certain spell. Like I don't allow people to use to use wish because mm -hmm. I, because I think that undercuts the GM's role. Ah, they will squeal like a pig under a fucking gate, <laughs> and it is not a matter of not liking low or hot or high magic. What I dislike. Our dumbass traditions kept because kept because they're traditions. Mm -hmm. Pathfinder seems to be trying to address some of those traditions and is doing so in a way that seem that while I may have some issues with it down the line, I really hope they don't pussy out on this. Ah. There was one Kool Aidish entry in the character creation section, but nothing too overt. This is it's not like we're dealing with Changeling twentieth anniversary again. Hmm. Which I, which, which as, which, um, I covered with you, Doku. You were there when I covered that, to, covered that whole dice dog guy two weeks ago, and who subsequently oh, yeah. deleted hit, who deleted his blog over that. But with the tape, but um, I might, I might run Pathfinder's um, playtest after Second City is finished. In fact, I'm probably going to do that since they included an adventure path with it called Doomsday Crown. But that'll be a, that'll be a story for another time. But mm -hmm. and and while we're at it, we may as, we may as well get to the big the big one. The, the geek, in the room. Yeah, the geeks of the week. Because get out the get out the shovel, get out the donkey. We go in salt mining. Oh yes. Oh, I always love to delve down into a good salt mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a good. This is a really good salt mine. Okay, let's start with let's start with a small one, and I do I do have to thank I do have to I do have to thank the ever awesome Mombot for bringing this up. <laughs> so as you as you all know, Anita Sarkeesian was one of the guests of honor for a panel called Uncommon Conversations. I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know the details of what it's supposed to of uh, actually you know what. Let's check what that was supposed to be. I was say guest of honor is being very generous. Yes. Uncom Uncommon conversations panel, Gen Con. Um, okay. The I want to know how many people attended this panel. Not many. I'm very curious. Yeah. Um. I just see. keep getting flashbacks of the uh, diversity. Somebody, well, somebody named AJ Sears um, po posted. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uncom. Okay, it says Miss Sarkeesian will be hosting an uncommon conversation with Anita Sarkeesian, date and time to be de to to be determined. This informal conversation will be moderated by Luke Crane and will con and will include a Q and A session. 
All Uncommon Conversations will be streamed for a delayed release during and after the show on Gen Con and Twitch and, U- and YouTube channels. Luke Crane is the head of games at Kickstarter. Da, da, da. Is also a designer and publisher of games like Burning Wheel, Mouse Guard, and Torchbearer. Mm-hmm. Yep, we've all, well that part's already been r- ripped in, but 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 Mombot had 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 taken a photo where where she where she had said Gencon roll call, and somebody named L at, at drawn out of shape said heading there now. Just caught your unconversa- uncommon conversations panel. Great work! Can't believe so few people were there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Please screen capture that and send it to me. You can. Well, I will. I, I will also find it since I can just copy. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. I can't believe so many people were there. Yeah. Uh-huh. So too many people. So, so many, many people. people. <laughs> yeah. I, just, and I want to edit it. I want to edit it just to be a dick. Apparently, yeah. it was. But apparently, right. it was filmed. If. If uh, th- if that's the case, um, I might ha- I might have to see if I can capture that film so we can riff on that. Yes, oh, that would be amazing. Yes. I will tr- I will try to do that. I'm not making any promises though. Mm-hmm. But- well, I want to I want to find a I want to find some sort of music that's not going to be copyrighted and just send it to you just to do a little do a little montage. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but speaking of Gen Con, we've got to address the b- the big elephant in the room, which was Jeremy Hambly, aka the Quartering, aka Unsleeved Media, was assaulted at Gen Con at the bar. Uh, yes. Yeah, at the bar, at the bar outside at the bar outside when so- when somebody who I when when. When the Matt Fantastic, Matt, yeah, Matt Fantastic, who I will forever refer to as Princess Matt, <laughs> because he, because I'm sorry, but when you wear a Punch Nazis T-shirt, then you do not get the right to have and to have any respect, because um, you because you oh clear God. you clearly are replacing your drinks with soy. You are. Oh, and let's not even mention the soy face that that one of the that one of the. Oh, um... oh we'll get to that. <laughs> now, I do want I do want to give a, I do want to give a bit of props to Ethan Van Skyver, who you might know on YouTube as Comic Artist Pro Secrets, and has been and has been a thorn and has been a thorn in Kathleen Kennedy's side for the la- for the last two years. He set up a GoFundMe for J- for Jeremy over over the whole thing, which I got which successfully was, funded within the weekend. It got successfully funded with in less than a day. Its cur- its goal was ten thousand dollars. It's currently raised fourteen point two thousand. Ah. And somehow we're the hateful ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whereas this whereas this guy, according to one of the testimonies, the guy had the guy had said. Had, had started punching him, grabbed his shirt, and said, "I'm I'm gonna fucking kill you," and then and then ran. Yeah, well, yeah, he asked his name. Yeah, he asked who Jeremy was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then he punched him repeatedly, ripped all the buttons off of his shirt, said, "I'm going to to expel to kill you." Well, it's not that he even just punched him; he sucker punched him. Yeah. Yeah, in the back. Which leads me to wonder if he's gotten if he's got a uh, if he's got <clears throat> anti- if he's got an Antifa trash lid in his house. Yeah, no, no, he probably doesn't, dude. Remember, Antifa hates public sanitation. Is that uh, there's no that way, way this guy has a trash can? Is that why they're using plastic garbage cans as improvised riot shields? <laughs> probably, if Portland is anything to go by. Yeah, but Portland's a shithole. Love you. Love you too. Well, I'm not going to disagree, but I will admit the Portland Police Department actually did their job for once. Yeah, I was expecting something a lot worse. Yep, but yeah. as I, I when I first found out about this thing, because um, after 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 a bunch of other YouTubers covered it, like t- like um, Magical Tabletop Girls, a- aka uh, Tara Sophia, 
and um, Tim Pool. What what I am what my immediate prediction was you are going you are going to see the professional victims try and try and take advantage, and some of the blue hairs did did, and you are also going to see the you're also going to see a bunch of people try and cl- try and claim as if as if this was somehow a victory. So let's get to the obvious one first, which what which is uh, which 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 is um Ben McShane. T- TV Ben who's apparently a big shot over on the Nerdist. All right. Yeah. Also I um I got a bit of an update from from uh, Aaron he's going to be here in about 15 minutes barring any um bullshit. Mhm. But his response his first response Ben McShane's first response was I'm just relieved someone punched the Nazi and then following it up with saying the bigger issue is that a fascist showed up at an, at an inclusive event. Can you see the finger quotes? Yeah. And then said, and then when somebody responded, he said, "Nah, fascists are untenable." Never mind the fact that the guy has the soyest of soy faces. Agreed. <laughs> oh, um, the soy boy face is strong with that one. Yep. Yes. Um, somebody named Mark Lean had made had made a comment on on a on a YouTube. On YouTube, a comment that got held, even though the guy, even though the uh, the person who made the video posted the held comment saying, "Ha ha, fat bastard got what was coming to him. When I see him, I'm gonna beat his faggot ass too." I'm sure you are. I love that you assholes think you're the only ones with guns. Oh, hold up, oh. we got a badass over here. Oh wait, we're only half, <laughs> only half right on that. That motherfucker. Like you really, you really want to encourage violence against individuals after seeing one punch man at Portland, and that did not involve weapons. Or, this and is really the rabbit hole you guys want to go down. Another bit, another bit of failure is from somebody named Old Man Layfield, which um, for because 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 wrestling because a wrestling fan, anytime I hear the name Layfield, I can't help but have a little bit of a cringe. And, oh yeah, JBL. Yeah, cunt. Mm-hmm. If you if you Doku, I know I know you don't watch much wrestling, but suffice to say, I don't I don't call him that lightly. Uh, <laughs> I know you don't, and uh, trust me, I don't blame Doku you for cringe. To, to explain, JBL is pretty much a bully. Yeah, he he. Bullied Mauro Ronaldo into leaving originally. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I have heard about this through Tonka's talk. Ah, he's mentioned yeah. it at least once or twice. Ah, yeah, nice. Yeah, talk is pretty talk is pretty cool. But um, but old man Layfield had said first first he's in a conversation with uh, Marco Rapucci. He had said. He could have defended himself in the first place. You reap what you sow. Instead of fighting back and stand and standing up for his statements and actions, he ran, then made a video about it. Typical millennial, in my opinion. He held he did a disservice to himself and his fans. Oh my oh god. god. Oh, you mean he didn't resort to violence, especially a sucker punch, like the little fucking cowards you are. Right. That makes him a cow okay. Yeah, yeah, and if well, if he if he fought back, then he then this motherfucker would have immediately said, "Why why did why did you why did you attack a poor why did you attack a poor defenseless Matt? He didn't do he didn't do he didn't do nothing. He's a good boy. He just needs money for them programs." Wow. It really would you rather Jeremy Hambly, a dude who's like what is he like six four six five and like two hundred and forty pounds? Would you rather him deck you in the frickin' face? You'd be going to the hospital. You I don't would. care if you're good at fighting. That's a lot no, of weight behind one punch. Your, shot, your jaw would be broken. Yeah, y- y- it's not going to end well for you. You should be happy that he's actually a gentle giant, so to speak. You would not have a good time. No. And you wouldn't be going to Gen Con to promote your game. <laughs> Layfield further goes on to say, "I agree. A hearty debate could be just could be just as powerful. However, any self respect the man had should be gone. He ran away. The issue with that is that he is that he talks a big game behind that camera. T- 
tells people to go bother people with anxiety issues in public, then calls them out for taking issue. Oh. Wow, that's a lot of stretching. I think even I think even Mr. Fantastic would be amazed at how far you stretch that. Yeah, that's that's a stretch Armstrong right there. No pun intended. Hey, so you're upset that the dude you just attacked for basically no reason. Whether you agree or disagree with him, okay, that's one thing. But you just asked his name and sucker punched him like a bitch. And now you're mad that he didn't resort to violence. And he's then you go to Gen Con the next day to promote your game. This Did you... What? This guy's basically trying to pull the, oh, you should yeah, oh, you you have fought. You, you, you sucker fought. punched him, and now, you're at, and now you're mad that he didn't defend himself. What? You should be happy he didn't beat the crap out of you, because if I was him, I would have beaten the crap out of you. Agreed. What the heck? Uh, these individuals. It, there's no winning. Surprise, surprise, he's from Texas. At least he oh, claims surprise, he is. surprise. Of course he is. In gr so he pro so he's probably thinking with that whole with with similar stand your ground kind of laws except this is Indiana this is Indiana yeah and Which, it's it also take an long open for it didn't take lucky long for Jeremy Matt didn't to, have a gun it didn't yeah. take long for Matt to basically out himself because mm -hmm. he apparently he posts because apparently Matt's own friends have not been cool with what he did and there I've been hearing rumors that that either that either that either he either he got his guest of honor status revoked or he's or Matt's or Matt's trying to hightail it out or something. But then Matt Fantastic and Mildred, check your DMs in a little, I'm sending you something. But Matt's whole response after this whole thing went down was saying, I'm keeping a lower profile, but I'm straight chilling and doing fine. <sighs> Telling stories about me online is what it is. No charges. I haven't fled the con slash state. I'm drinking beers, playing games, and doing business with my friends. But I'm trying to keep my friends and their companies from accidentally getting in the line of fire if someone sees me in their booth or whatever. Lots of immature doxing garbage with wild false rumors and accusations flying around, but it's mostly just an annoyance. Thanks so much for everyone who's been reaching out to me or my friends in support. Expansity sold out in like 10 minutes. Hashtag punch Nazis. You know what? Good on Jeremy for actually having a little bit of self awareness to a, to actually report him to the to the to the police that were there. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, 4chan was on that in about sixteen hours. Never. Un I've, I've said it before. Do not underestimate the power of weaponized autism. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Never underestimate the hacker known as 4chan and fear the Sam Hyde. Yeah. <laughs> I still also, I still find also this. guys, I have another article that I'll be talking about. It's about Stanley. Yeah, I, I saw that article. I've got that I've got that one queued up. Um, oh I haven't heard about this, so I guess we'll get a live reaction at least. This is breaking. Yeah. Mm. So so with with and of course, of course, I'd be remiss if I did not mention Gen Con, which, um, as the as the song goes, congratulations, Gen Con, you just made my shit list. Mm -hmm. Or if you which, oh, my actually, you know what, you know what, nope, never mind. I'm not. This does not deserve the Jericho meme. Um, which I don't know. Go ahead. But Gen Con has been trying really hard to sweep this under the rug. So much is going. So much is going. So much is banning. Uh, um, users on their Twitch page for even bringing it up on their streams. That's because they're in full-on damage control mode. They don't know what the hell to do. Yeah they, yeah, they don't know what the hell to do. I know. And people did people did not take kindly to the fact that they promoted his game expand expand city, including including doing including doing some sort of discount deal with deal with it on their uh, on their Twitter page. I'll just check your DMs real quick. Which is why oh, I had to send. Sorry, go ahead, Meldra. Okay, what have we, what have we got here? This is this has to do with silver. You know, just real quick, I can't take too much of a shit on Gen Con, because let's be honest, they're a gaming convention. Did they really know that this kind of crap was going to happen? I and mean, you're no. talking about the culture war. 
and <laughs> you have one you have one random dude who's a YouTuber that's going to show up. There's no way that they could possibly have expected the kind of backlash no, that they're going to get. Not over, at all. No, no, over but they one should, Actually, no. I'm I'm not giving I'm not giving them any slack because. Yeah, you know, they are, they are the of the internet, and they are the not only are they the convention, they should be they should be well versed as everyone else is in the Streisand effect. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they were incompetent in it, but it, they're a gaming convention. They're a tabletop gaming convention. They're probably too busy, you know, watching Arch Warhammer or something like that. I doubt they even knew who Jer it Jeremy Hambly was. Do you really think? No, they're they're not going to be they're not going to be watching Arch because Arch. Because, for oh, because I forgot for he's a Nazi. Yeah, yeah, they're they're too they're probably too busy reading articles from feminist forty k one handed. Oh, <laughs> oof, oof, oof. oh my. Which is, that, bring, I that, bring, that brings You're up my right. point that I'm going to make. That brings up the point that I'm going to make. The weekend that they're holding their convention next year. Is the same weekend that the biggest brony convention in the world is is holding their final convention. Wait, their final? Wait, wait. First off, two questions. The final convention? No, this not, was a thing. No, not. No, uh, well, yeah, Bro BronyCon um, announced that next year is going to be their final convention. <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. And it's the same week as Gen Con 2019. It's oh. the same weekend as Gen. It's the same weekend as Gen Con 2019. Which, yeah, that's probably going to be a problem, but it probably won't. Someone cue the Richard C. Meyer memes. Let's get up. <laughs> wasn't a good idea. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm, I I'm going to the stream to see the comments. <laughs> um, I, I need somebody I need somebody to find a picture of a bunch of furries dressed up as my little pony characters and it wasn't a good idea <laughs> <sighs> okay <laughs> Mo moving on from moving on from that it, I think it's I think it's time that we uh, bring that we bring up so we bring the mood that we, that we lighten the mood yeah because because um I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more some more developments on that but we'll see we'll see how the dice fall on that when we come when we come back next week um now there and of course the next thing is the whole is a whole matter of Patrick Stewart coming back coming Patrick after, Stewart coming back as Picard yeah after he tweeted it is an unexpected but delightful surprise to find myself excited and invigorated to be returning to John Luke Picard and explore new dimensions within him. Read my full statement in the photo, which he says, quote, I will always be very proud to have been a part of Star Trek The Next Generation. When we wrapped up the, that final movie in the spring of 2002, I, I love that he, do, he doesn't outright call, he doesn't outright use its name. He just says it like that. So I think even he's embarrassed by it. Which brings up a point that that was brought that was um, illustrated at illustrated when um, Patrick um, went when Patrick brought announced this, but I'll get I'll get to that. Mm -hmm. I truly felt my time with Star Trek had run its natural course. It is therefore an unexpected but delightful surprise to find myself excited and invigorated to be returning to John Luke Picard and explore new dimensions within him. Seeking out new life for him when I thought that life was over. New During frontier. these past years, it has been humbling to hear stories about how the next generation brought people comfort, saw them through difficult periods in their lives, or how the example of John Luke inspired so many to follow in his footsteps, pursuing science, exploration, and leadership. I feel I'm ready to return to him for the same reason, to research and experience what comforting and reforming light he might shine on these often very dark times. I look forward to I look forward to working with our brilliant creative team as we endeavor to bring a fresh, unexpected, and pertinent story to life once more. Patrick, that is a very progressive tweet. Yes. Yeah. This the because of the fact that appar Even apparently though. this is going to be a this is not going to be a follow up to Discovery. It's going to be its own thing, which is kind of an admission of defeat, in my opinion. I.e., that the. They've they've acknowledged that Discovery 
what did not do what they thought it was going to. They, Even they though it's it going to be a season two, they thought it was going to be their. They thought it was going to be their flagship, which um, of evidently anybody who thought that they could launch a whole new network with Star Trek as the flagship. I guess they I guess they didn't realize what, when they tried that in the 70s or rather when when Paramount tried that I should say not to mention there's still this uh, there's still this legal bet there was this there's still this massive legal battle going on between Paramount and CBS which is why they had to have the Klingons look so butt ugly all uh, I want to know is how much do they pay Patrick Stewart Oh, and we actually have video of his announcement, of the announcement that he's coming back. Yep. Um, wow. Mm. But what? But um, he made himself. But I think it, it's probably just covering over this. It's probably just covering over the same re- same remark. Um. What I do think. What I do think is, is um, it is interesting. Is that. Like it, I feel like this. I feel like this is a desperation move. That not ah. in the, that they don't because I had I had stated for quite a while that this whole CBS All Access thing was was fucked from the beginning because one the people who most of the audience that CBS has is normies, whereas something like All Access that sort of thing. They're not really. They're not really going to. The only people who are going to really be interested in and su- supporting that kind of service are people who are a hardcore audience, mm-hmm. and the people who and are. There is the video in the chat, Doku. The people who are that kind of hardcore mm-hmm. probably already have something like Netflix or who or Hulu or and or any or any or other Amazon major video. Show. Yeah, Amazon Amazon Video. Um, crunchy roll for crunchy roll and the like for the weebs, but WWE point, Network for the wrestling fans. Yeah. Well, you oh, know, please. here's the thing. It's... Oh, please. oh, wrestling fans, please. We're watching NJPW World around here. <laughs> Which reminds well, me. Mildred, Mildred, you definitely know this is a desperation move. And as I've said before, SJWs aren't creative and they can't create because they use everything no. as a sounding board for their own political ideologies exactly. they're not creative individuals which is why no. they're bringing that john luke picard it feels even just the tweet feels forced hmm. it, it, however, you know however, it's I, however i can understand why they're doing this they cbs all access wants viewers oh and yeah i can't blame them for wanting more viewers. Subscribers. yeah they want more subscribers and patrick's not wrong I can imagine people coming up to him, like on the street, telling telling him that his portrayal of Jean Luc and and Next Generation um, changed their lives in some in some way. Which which goes to my point. Ma- Marina Sirtis, the actor, the actress who played Deanna Troy said that she would have been fired in season one if the actress for Tasha Yar didn't quit. Yeah, because Jean, Jean, is a, Jean is an asshole, and nobody likes to talk about those first two seasons. And it's true. I mean, mm-hmm. But, I mean, can, can you really blame the network or even Patrick no. Stewart? No, 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 I can't. Um, um, they want they want viewers. Patrick yeah. Stewart's getting the chance to play an iconic role for probably the last time in his life. My fear is that the character is going to be mistreated, and it's going to be like everything we've seen SJWs do, and they're going to use it as a sounding board. They, and they're going hopefully, to they give him. Apart. Yeah, hopefully, they give him artistic license. To do to do what he wants, we can hope. Character. Yeah, I wouldn't bet money on it, but we can hope. Yeah, well, he, he already Not has. He, he already right has then. some. He already has some background with tell with telling off his higher ups because for first contact, if you recall, they want they wanted to do this whole Borg's Borg throughout history thing, which got nixed because Picard told because um John Luke told ah, ah, geez, what Patrick am I saying? Stewart. 
because Patrick Stewart told him, I'm not wearing tights again. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the reason I like Patrick Stewart is because he's a no-nonsense kind of asshole that I would love to have a drink with. Also, shut up, Will. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, Will has actually gotten tired of people saying that to him because of Patrick and of Patrick announcing that he's coming back as Sean Luke. Do you remember that the, well, do you remember a Twitter account just what Flutter. I'm only no. gonna add one person. Will yeah. Wheaton and just say shut up, Will. <laughs> yeah. Flutter, Doku, do you recall the the um the T the TNG Legos that's that, that oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. And yes, the do. Wesley one was him crying, and Will Wheaton got ridiculously butthurt over it. <laughs> and it was amazing. Like if you don't if you don't want people to keep to keep making that meme, then stop then stop giving them ammo. And it's stop really giving them fodder. I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't showed up in one of the Lego movies yet. Same here. I, that I'm, surprised that not, I'm surprised that none of that none of them have actually that that none of them showed up because that would be per that would be perfect. It's probably it a license to get shit. Mm -hmm. It's and the director's guess. cut. Oh no! Wait, not. I'm sorry. It's not the director's cut. It's the Will Wheaton cut. <laughs> <sighs> I hope. Anyway. I hope that. Uh, I hope that that joke wasn't too cheesy and it didn't cut Will Wheaton a little too deep. Because let's be <laughs> honest, the guy doesn't have a sense of humor. No, he no. doesn't. No, and if um, if we all if we all pulled our money together and got him a and got him a degree, he might graduate to being to to being a moron. Yes. However, I've kind of got a geek of the week of my own. Geek and Sundry, what the hell are you doing? Oh, okay. Hey, this Aaron. Is... Uh, Hello, Aaron. You know, real real quick. Why? I want to make a joke about Will Wheat Thins, but that's oh. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. But like I said, this, kids, this is why I always say, Cal with the exception of California, Illinois is the worst state. Is is this in response to the whole to the whole thirty people getting killed in three hours? That and the fact you can't find a decent jo decent job. That's kind oh, I meant to of why I will never leave West Coast. I meant to ask about that. Was there was there like a a mass shooting or some sort of event, or is this just business as usual? Oh, oh, oh! With the mass oh, business as usual. It's Chicago. Yeah, that's what I figured, but I didn't want to really acknowledge it. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, like I was going to say, my geek, my geek of the week, geek and sundry. What the hell are you doing? Oh, okay, geek and you're gonna have to explain this because yes. what, do, D &D. what do these phonies do now? Celebrity D&D. Yeah. Wait, what? You know, okay. given, given the fact that he, given the fact that fifth edition is D and D for essentially babies, I'm not surprised. Although, um, however, Matt, however, they got someone good to DM. Matt Mercer. Who the fuck is that guy? I know, I Le know of Matt. He Leon from Leon from Resident Evil Six. Oh. Hmm. They also That's got good. Terry Motherfucking Cruz to be one of the players. I think. Oh, yeah. I, how the hell did they pull that off? Okay, here. Well, well, come on. Guess who founded that bullshit? Felicia Fake. Yeah. Oh. All right, that explains. That. I've I've made it I've made it clear that I I don't watch much in the way of geek and sundry <laughs> shit. The um, that that for for that that's Doku's job. Not no, sorry, not Doku. That's Biohybrid's job. Sorry, sorry, oh. Doku. I was gonna say, wait, what? <laughs> We're. Words are words are currently failing me, and I'm and I'm failing my first language. Words, you can you can use them. Yes, and the thing the thing of it is, I the reason why I don't want I even though people keep telling me I should watch I should watch Critical Role or or something like that because Ugh. because D and D guy. 
I said this when I, I said this when I uh, did when I did my little react I did my little reactions to Hyperforce. I don't like the notion of having my GM style influenced by anyone who isn't me. And for and further and furthermore, they're they fall they continuously fall into the Tolkien melting pot trap. I have worked especially hard to not fall into. Mm -hmm. Like I don't is photo. You've seen the stuff that I've done that I've done with the RVT crew. I have gone yes, out of my I way have, to I not. Seen ever, I have seen everything from TRPG presented by RVT. Yeah, more specifically to name to name them off. Right of the transformation, New Minera, um, the enemy within, and currently that was Warhammer. What? The enemy within was Warhammer. Oh right. Um, yeah, Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 3E, um, and L5R 4E. Yep. Known as the Second City. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, Shades is a, is an amazing Shades Shades's character is an amazing leader. Yeah, yeah, I th I think I think in the last three years he's re he's really stepped up. But um, same for same for everyone else, and including Lady K. Yeah, um, one thing one thing that it, that I should no the other thing that I, the other thing that I should note is that when I look at when I look at the style when I look at the style of, of the games that they end up going with again setting wise they're still using the Tolkien melting pot. There's also the fact that they are that they are far more interested in just in just doing. Glorified storytelling than actually playing than actually playing their damn game, and also yeah. they also like a lot like a lot of these stream like a lot of these streamers, they have a script writer. So basically, it's like uh, what's what's that stupid shit that um that uh they, that Dashcon tried to get? Welcome to something. Hmm. It's some stupid radio play. Hell, I don't I don't even the the guys on. My podcast, the podcast that I'm a part of, the Token Roundup, which Mildred is an associate of, don't even, we we do our TRPGs similar to what um, our RBT or TRPG percent of RBT does, even though we've only done one TRPG so far, yeah. Night Rogues Darkness Rising, AK, which is done through Saga. But saga. If, but if I if I if I don't if I don't care for how and there is cert there is certainly the possibility that if they ran other that if they ran if they put more variety into their stuff then maybe I, then maybe I'd like it and there's also the fact that that particular style well that particular style is also used by encounter roleplay and you all know why oh, I am God. not my oh, I am Jesus not Christ. doing any business with them yeah i know i we all know the story that that you that you have with Mm. Wow. Yeah, and and, the, and you know, and like I said, the, and also the reason they don't want to get out of this little Tolkien melting pot is, like I said, they can't figure out the original stories of their own. They don't got ideas of their own. No, no. In, fa in fact, and this, I have, I have this. This continues to weird me out every time I fucking say it. But it blows my damn mind that Seth fucking McFarlane. The guy behind Family Guy and, and a bunch of other shows I can't stand managed to do a better Star Trek than Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, when you talk about these individuals, it, let's be blunt. If we really want to address the issue, it's because they're chasing after the tried and true because they want to make money. It's not about creative or being creative. It's not about trying to be innovative. It's not about chasing your own dreams, your own ideas, anything like that. It's not about putting a twist on anything. They want to follow the tried and true model because there's at least going to be somewhat of an audience for it, and it will make them money. Exactly. I, th I think it's more of that they I th money is certainly a factor, but I think it's more. I think it's more of this work this work was famous so if we try and be if we try and be like it then we'll be just as fam then we'll be just as famous well they're also lazy we can't ignore that yeah yeah 
and the and that's and of but of of course you you um you ha because of how culty it all is you've got to be ideologically appropriate and you and can't do that while also while also doing something that's going to draw money yeah they're gold, don't get yeah, me they're wrong gold brick and, yeah they are gold brick and morons they're just gold brick and morons and don't get me wrong Mildred. as a fantasy writer there are tropes that i like because they work like for example in the novel that i'm writing there are dark elves the dark elf race is mostly female the dark elf race is also dying because it is mostly female and they are masochistic and they are sadistic and sexual deviants but at the same time there's a love story to be had there but SJWs and these types are too creatively inept to realize you can take a situation like that and craft a very compelling love story from it, as mm -hmm. opposed to Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. Well, the worst insult yeah. that I can never make with Fifty Shades of Grey is that it started out as a Twilight fanfic. Yep. Well, that, yeah, that, that, that sums it up. Um. Now, as for, now getting into getting into some of the news because we do have a few we do have a few articles to go through. And I think the first one, since this is breaking news as of today, is Stanley no longer performing public autograph signings. That's a good thing. Famed Marvel Marvel Comics writer Stanley will no longer participate in public autograph signings. Bleeding cool reports. Desert Wind Comics, who hosts signing events with Lee, say in their event schedule, fans hoping to have comics, comic books, or merchandise autographed by Lee can submit their materials through the mail until August 18th. As many of you know, Stan Lee has been getting older, and as such, signing opportunities are getting more rare. And getting books that are eligible for GGC signature si series, signature series great, signature series grading is becoming more difficult. The exact date and location of, of these signings will not be announced for security reasons. So we are simply authorized to announce accepting books early and will accept books up and up and up until up until the deadline. So submit early if you so you don't get caught, caught by surprise and miss the signing. The price to get a modern tier book signed and graded is $180. That price includes grading that price includes grading of a modern tier book. Our witnessing and handling fee, and our witnessing and, ha and handling fee of Stan's sign, or our witnessing and handling fee and Stan's signing fee. Non-graded comic books or raw items like posters and toys are priced beginning at one hundred and sixty dollars, and depend on the size and value of the item. To be very clear, Stan is one hundred percent not doing any conventions or public signings. In the last few years, his well-being has been compromised by people for monetary gain, and that practice is over, Bowler Jack said. His private signings had also been paused for a month while Stan's for a month while Stan's life gets back to normal and, and time could be given to review signing deals made by previous people involved in Stan's life. Lee is signing a very small amount of items per week at his discretion, some for Desert Wind. Roller Jack said, explaining Lee, explaining we Lee was formally tasked with signing hundreds and sometimes thousands of books per day. My concern is for Stan's health and wishes, so he signs what he wants when he wants, which as is all is it always, which it, which is as always, which is as it always should be. Spider Man and Avengers co creator inspired concern from fans after a, after a video surfaced from an April convention appearance showing a fragile Lee. Struggling to pen multiple autographs in quick su succession. Kaya Morgan, Lee's former business manager, who has since been fired and issued multiple restraining orders, can be seen in the video instructing the comic book creator how to spell his own how to spell his own name. Lee remains active on his official Twitter account, where he regularly interacts with his true believers through tweets and videos. Hmm. You know, I'm actually glad to hear this news. Yeah, so let am I. Let the old man rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let the old man rest and get his life back and get his life back together. He doesn't got much longer. He, he, like, 
How old is he? Like ninety something years old. Ninety uh, ninety five, almost ninety six. Jesus. Oh wow. He, I thought he was like ninety two, ninety three. Jeez. However, he has aged very gracefully. He looks like he's only seventy. I know. He's yeah. He's like a. I would not be surprised if Shatter lives to be lives to be over a hundred. Oh, no, I don't remember <laughs> when. I, I would not be surprised if he, was a, if he was a centennial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when that video came out when he was at a. I forget where it was. What was it? Was it Vegas? Ah, I forget. I'm not going to pretend to remember. But where he's basically just falling asleep, and Disney was working him like a freaking workhorse because, let's be honest, the guy's signature is worth a lot of money. Yeah. But it, just the way he was being treated, and I'm sure there's something that he's contractually uh, contractually obligated to do. But it's I like, can't. yeah, it's like, guys, this is a human being. Like, I get it. It's Stan this Lee. A, yeah, this is a human but, being. Let him rest, take care of his life, and nourish himself. Yeah, shit. If I make it to fucking 96, I'd be like, listen, man. I, the only time I'll ever sign anything is if if somebody comes up on the street and says, hey, hey, can you sign this thing? Sure, dude. Sure, dude. I'll, get, I'll, I'll do it for you. The, yeah. I, I, com I commend Desert Wind for, ha for, having, for, ha for having fans send stuff through the mail to his house to get it signed. I'm surprised the dude kept doing cameos in movies. <laughs> oh, he's been, yeah, he's been, yeah, he's been doing that since what, 2002? Jesus. Yeah, the dude's, the guy's a tank. I, he's a I machine. know the, I know the and, saying and is, he's also, he's days. also been, he's also been doing cameos for the MCU TV series, the, the Netflix series through pictures and in, and as a character for Bushman. Well, Which, I know the saying. I know the saying is very cliched, but they don't make them like that anymore. Yeah, no, no shit. Hell, his, I hell, wouldn't his, be, his yeah. most recent his most recent TV cameo was in Runaways, the Hulu exclusive show. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if half 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 of millennials don't even make it to sixty. Yeah. Well, well, if give, I make, well given, the, given the given the fact that soy is not as nutritious as people like to think it is, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hope I'm hope I'm hoping that that if the if a if a culling does happens that way, you know what? I can die on that. I'll die a happy old man. Um, uh, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if it's gonna go like that because remember the culling too came and came and went with that with barely a whimper. Oh, <laughs> and speak speaking uh, speaking of uh, speaking of massive amounts of failure, let's talk about let's talk about a, let's talk about Canada, or rather a Canadian cosplayer. Oh, this. Uh oh. So, yeah, this will be so fun. So this this dropped yesterday. A cosplayer from Canada was arrested in Tokyo last month for allegedly falsifying a marriage for immigration purposes. Shannon hmm. Danielle Jean Wong, 29, was taken into custody on July 11th by Tokyo Metropolitan Police, according to a report by Anime News Network. Her so-called husband, a husband, a 37-year-old construction worker named Michinari Sasaki, was also arrested and both confessed to charges of, of falsifying a marriage. Two had first met at a cosplay event in Shinjuku's Kabukicho district. <laughs> Wong, was reportedly interested in, Wong was reportedly interested in all things cosplay and Lolita fashion, which is why she wanted to gain Japanese citizenship. She had first oh, wait, entered the country on a student visa from 2012 to 2016. According to the report, it was Wong who approached who approached Sasaki with the idea of the fake marriage. In June 2016, she quote unquote proposed to him, with no intention of living with him or co or consummating their relationship. Oh my Sasaki God. knew what he was signing up for, however, as he allegedly demanded seventy thousand yen, six thousand two hundred sixty American dollars. Up Man, that's, front, cheap. And that's cheap. That's cheap as shit. And then an additional thirty thousand yen, two hundred and seventy dollars each month. After that, 
The would-be couple made their marriage official on June 17, 2016 in a ward office in Yokohama. However, the TIB, Tokyo Immigration Bureau, reportedly discovered the plot back in February. After a thorough investigation, they found that Wong and Sasaki had never lived together as a married couple. They finally built up enough evidence to arrest them both, both last month. A video published by the Fuji News Network showed the two as they were brought in for questioning. Sasaki looked resigned to his fate, while Wong looked extremely upset, as if she had been crying. During her time in Japan, she, she had reportedly held a number of jobs, including working in various capacities in various restaurants and also as a sex worker. <laughs> cosplay, cosplay, cosplay season is in full effect now as we are between some of the year's biggest comic conventions and other major events. Earlier this week, cosplayer Kino Kaoru's design went, vi went viral when he attended Asia Pop as Thanos and his young daughter dressed as a child Gamora. Whatever dark implications it had about their dynamic, <laughs> the costumes were both stunning. After they blew up on Reddit and other social media, Kaoru explained how they, how they came together in a Facebook post. Thanos cosplay by me. Little Gamora cosplayed by my daughter, Shay Denort. Shay Denorty. Or Denort. Costume is made by me and my wife. Mostly Ava foam and leatherette and leatherette and leatherette freehand built from scratch. Thanos face 3D printed. Filed by DO3D. Or by Do3D. Infinity Gauntlet is the Marvel Legends replica. Calry wrote Calry wrote a song alongside a video from the con. I fluttered just, uh, just out of just for my own amusement. Uh, can you go back and say exactly what kind of cosplay this individual partook in? And I want to point out cosplay and restaurants. Uh, I'm guessing that means not cafes. just cosplay and restaurants, sex work. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes. We can't forget the sex work. Oh yeah, but, especially with the love hotels over in Japan. Oh, I'm, guessing it, I'm guessing it wasn't a love. I'm guessing it wasn't a love hotel. I'm guessing it was a uh, so. I'm guessing it was some Soapland shit. Yep, Soapland. Well, if if I heard you correctly, Flutter, uh, I would like you to reread this section. Lolita. Yes. Yeah, Lolita. that's been that's been a thing for years. Uh, I know it has been, but I just find. Uh, it's the not, parallels if you're, think, very if, you're think, if you're thinking it has anything to do with lo with lollies, you're not. No, no, it does. No, it doesn't. But I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> I guess it ain't worth that to be an illegal waifu. Yep. I mean, it, first oh, of all, God, you I never, guess. and I mean ever, falsify a marriage. I just had a. Horrible, horrible idea. If they're doing Thanos cosplay, there is a very bad fisting joke there that I don't want to make. Oh, God. Yeah, no, yeah. Doku, yeah. sit down. Sit down, <laughs> Doku. Sit down, Doku. For God's sakes, Doku. No, you know me, I, have, I don't have many filters. Yeah, no. But you, I do you, have some uh, infinity stones. Of, yeah. First off, none of us do. Yeah, none of us do. Nope. All right. Um, you know, Japan, you know, that, that she should know better. I mean, if she wants to falsify a fucking marriage, do it in America. They do that shit all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's called mail order rides. Japan is a very bad idea. Japan does not play around with that kind of crap. No, yeah. they do not. No, they don't. Yeah, and you, no, wonder, don't. And you wonder why and there, you wonder why there's no truck of pieces in, in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't, yeah, apparently... Yeah, apparently the mail order bride business isn't isn't a is a really shriveling market there. At least that's mm -hmm. that, that's the only sad part. Yeah. Well, that well, there's a whole there's a whole can of worms that could be opened on that. But oh yeah, move, moving on in the in our into the trash it goes bit of, bit of the night. Oh yes. Uh oh. We have we have we have we have something from Polygon specifically uh -huh. how. The new uh, Aquaman will be more Wonder Woman than Superman. Kelly Sue DeConnick talks about her upcoming run on the Atlantean Hero. 
Which um, <sighs> she's screwed from day one because the person that she because she is trying to follow after Dan fucking Abnett, one of the big four the of the Black Library. Good <laughs> fucking luck. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Uh, also, I just have to say, Dan Abnett, one of my favorite authors. Yeah, like it, like I said, he, he it is for for a lot of people when it comes to the Black Library books for Warhammer Forty Thousand and Warhammer Fantasy to a lesser extent. He is the writer. Like if you gra if you are grabbing Forty K books and you see his name on it, you're gonna get you're gonna get something good. Yeah. Just uh. Uh, the the article goes. One of the most surprising reveals of, of SDCC 2018 was, was that Kelly Sue DeConnick will be tackling a new Aquaman story for DC Comics. Granted, that was at least partially because DC Comics co-publisher Dan DeDio wasn't supposed to have mentioned it at the company's tradition, traditional Thursday morning press event. Oh, wow. But the fish is out. Decon DeConnick, Whoops. who famously relaunched Cap Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel. Not exactly. Not exactly. Yeah. Yet. Ugh. We don't need to talk about Carl Manvers. No, and we don't. created the nope. women Let's in not. prison exploitation film subverting comic, Bitch Planet, which sucked. Uh. We'll be taking over the Aquaman series soon. So when I sat down with DeConnick this week, I had to ask, why Aquaman? Not to diminish the hero, of course. I'm a firm believer that there's no such thing as a dumb character. Bullshit. Bullshit, Bullshit yeah. from you. Ever heard of American Chavez? And seriously, why didn't they give her Mira? Why Aquaman? You know no, she's just going to emasculate him. Didn't they give her Mira? Why Aquaman? Yeah, if anything, give her Mira. And anything but Aquaman. All she's going to do is emasculate him. And she's not that great of a writer to begin with anyways. Here's the video that the... Also, here's the... There's the video that... that there's the tweet and, and video that talks... that um, covers the falsified marriage. Anyway, continue. Mm. Yeah, I swear, uh, I swear to Christ, uh, the, I mean, wh what is DC doing? I mean, do they look at look at Marvel's little uh, little uh, business model? What I call a this is what I call the birdcage liner model, and says, "Oh, this is such a great idea." You know what? I can yeah. tell you exactly what they're doing, and this trend is going to continue. When it come, this happened to Hollywood, it's going to continue happening with comics, and it's going to bleed into other hobbies as well. And this is the reason people like Ethan Van Skyver, Dad Ab uh, Abnett, they're moving out of the industry. Because A, their employers can't afford to pay them. And B, they're being pushed out of the industry for ideological reasons. I mean, I don't know what Dan Abnett's... Uh, political affiliations are, but they can make more money just in the current age and era that we live in, especially with first to file copyright laws. Hell he can they, go he can don't go, need to work he can go back Marvel. to Games Workshop and make a lot more money. Well and that's the thing. They don't need to work for Marvel. They don't need to work for DC. They don't even need to work for Games Workshop. They can go out there and do something that's crowdfunded. They can do whatever the hell they want. They have a lot more freedom. They can work on their own time, and they'll probably make a lot more money at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. The talent pool is shrinking, yeah, and no, that's the reason you're getting a bunch of crap that's coming out of these, essentially, at this point, I would say it's legacy entertainment. Yeah, and, and, and you, anyway. You make up a good point, though. You make you bring up a good point. Um, there was a video that I checked out of, with Diversity in Comics. Apparently, there are some studios... That are art that are paying their artists diddly shit. They're, no, they're only paying them like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year, which is not crap if you're living in New York or Portland or wherever. Yeah, but they're but yeah. they're basically being paid diddly shit, and they're not getting any bonuses. Or as, as opposed to you, you work for a you work for Richard Meyer, you're probably you're probably going to get bonuses out the ass. Mm -hmm. hey, I'd go work for him. Screw it. Like, yep. um, he'd probably pay me pretty well. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyway, it goes. DeConnick told me that was part of the attraction to tackling a book described by DC, 
by DC's chief creative officer Jim Lee as a Batman Year One for the Atlantean. Mm. Uh, yeah. just, just here's, the, the, here's the difference: Batman Year One was actually good. Yeah, but it's one. It's become one of those books that's had a that's had a questionable legacy. Um, she goes, "Quote: Aquaman is this character. Line art and such. He is part of the Justice League, so he's one of the big seven, right? But he's also kind of considered second tier." So he's a little bit under the radar, and I think that makes him an underdog he's to start with. Considered second tier because of the shitty Super Friends. <laughs> I was about to say, that. and the whole thing—it's and it's kind of hard for him to be an underdog when he's the king of a country. He's, he's king not of the king of the country in the world. Of, he's king of three quarters of the planet. <laughs> yeah, he's king and of water, it, pretty much. It's kind of hard to be an underdog when you can bring tidal waves on somebody's head and throw sharks at them. <laughs> yeah. Which I would love to see. I just want to see Aquaman yank a shark yeah. out of the freaking ocean and throw Wait, it at somebody's face. To be honest, when the upcoming DCEU films actually look entertaining in comparison to this and DC's other works, yeah, you're, do yeah, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and like and like you said, it's gonna get a lot worse. All this shit from Hollywood, comics is bleeding over. Luckily, the gaming industry is starter. In some places, it's it's saying "fuck you, get out of here." While other places like Ubisoft is like, "Okay, destroy our company. We don't care. Destroy our company. We don't care. We'll still make money off of Assassin's Creed games." Yeah. Well, at least it seems like the gaming industry is starting to realize from the, the mistakes of the comic industry. Diversity? Yeah, yeah it, diversity does sell when it's done right. There is a reason yes. the X-Men is a thing. But force There's diversity doesn't. is a thing. Yeah, I mean, well, dude, actually, look at the anime. I do, find, I do find it funny that the, um, that, the biggest, that the biggest fans of, of Wakanda... Are alt writers <laughs> like, well, because, because Wakanda's an ethno state? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's yeah. literally all an ethno state. Yeah. It's, it's, an ethno state. It's, all, it's all it's all black. It's all black people. It's comprised of, and they cloak themselves from the rest of the world, and they hoard their resources. Yeah, they they yeah, yeah they export their in, their resources to people that actually want them. And the only white perps, the only white people that they will bring in, are the Avengers, and Everett Ross. Yep. Well, and, and you have wait. to admit they did save they did save Everett Ross, so at least they have more of a heart than the far left. And anyway, continu <laughs> continuing on, um, one comment that she made that was that there were a couple of comments that made that she made that were very that were a bit groany towards the end of the article, where she said. Oh, boy. The approach for Aquaman is that he's always is that he's essentially mixed race, right? He's half Atlantean and half human, so he doesn't belong in either place. He's mixed and species. Get it right. Uh, yeah. okay. And the idea is that each place rejects him for that. But my feeling is that in contemporary society, we cannot play the beautiful, literally bulletproof white boy off as facing bias because of his mixed parentage. I think oh, that there it is. Oh, here we go. I don't there, know. Here we go. Really, you really you're yeah. really bringing this into it, really? Oh. Yeah, yeah, she is. Also, she I have another article have to say. There's these different iconic models we work with in superheroes, and he's always been the alien model, right? No, it's been more about him being king oh. than they, than than him being an quote unquote the alien, alien. The alien model comes from two characters in just two 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 leaguers: Superman and Martian Manhunter. Mm -hmm. And both of them are essentially the are essentially supposed to be the last of their the last of their line, even though that's not entirely the case. Um, uh, let's see, super, oh like, yeah, cause, cause he, cause he goes on to say, girl. like super, like Superman, Aquaman is not of this is not of this world. Oh uh, bullshit! Uh, <laughs> wrong. He so is wrong, a Earth is just wrong, he does, wrong. He doesn't wrong, go on to land. Wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're I think wrong. We all just collectively had an aneurysm. Yeah. yeah. He and, doesn't um, go on land. There's a difference. 
How in it's the same fucking planet, you dingbats. Yep. She goes you on to say, I want she go she goes on to say, I wanted to shift from that to more of a mythological grounding. More like Wonder Woman or Thor would be myth-based characters as opposed to the alien model. So basically uh... So that's the other shift that I'm making, but it isn't like I'm rewriting his history. It's rather sort of a tonal shift or an approach shift. I don't want to scare anyone. Really, I'm not scary and very nice. I'm sure oh. your cats very much agree with you. Bullshit. Yeah, mm. this is this is more wokeness. You're, you're, you're freaking uh, it's cringing, everybody. Put your fucking head down. Stay away from that shit. Otherwise... No, 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 no. Eric, if you're going to say that, do it right. Put your motherfucking head back down. <laughs> you know what? She might be nice, but I'm... Yeah, I'm scared. So, yeah. so am I. I. So am I. Here's here's my prediction of what's going to happen. The first issue is going to sell fairly well, and then after that, yeah, five it's issues, sixty percent drop off. I'm five calling issues, it she's 60 done. Sixty-five percent. So five, five, yeah, issues, five issues, issues and then they'll probably then they'll probably uh, issue a letter to Dan Abnett saying, please, 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 please come back. <laughs> Yeah, really. You know what? I I have to say this. I honestly hope it's good. I really do. It. I don't want to see an industry that I love die. It kind of like with uh, diversity in comics when he did his video earlier today. Whatever you want to say about the guy, and just for the record, one of one of the pilots of one of the flights that actually went into the uh, World Trade Towers, that was one of my dad's neighbors. I had met Wait, them as a what? kid. Say what? <laughs> no. Yeah. God yeah. damn. I, I had met them as a child. Oh, His, and, 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 Wait, yeah, which one? one? 11 or 175? Uh, 175. Oh, oh I, I, have, I have something to add on to that. My well, the grandfather. Real, real quick. Was staying in the same hotel as one of the pilots. Oh, ouchies! Um, possibly eleven, up. possibly one seventy-five. I I have I haven't inquired about that yet. Well, and real real quick, this pilot, his wife was a flight attendant. My dad's wife is a flight attendant. The hell? Damn. They were they were both friends. This guy's wife actually traded shifts with another flight attendant so that they could be on the same flight together. Oof. That wow. was the same flight that went into the it's South basically, Tower. Basically, she traded shifts just to commit suicide with it with her husband. Whether That's they realized sad. it or not. I mean, it. it's an interesting story, whether they realize it or not. But eh, at least they, I guess, at least they got the chance to be together. But that's neither here nor there. My point is, when I hear someone like Aubrey Sitterson saying, "If you weren't in downtown Manhattan when that happened, you don't have a right to mourn, and you're just pretending," I want to punch oh, the dude. Oh, fucking shit! Oh, using the Parkland fucking reference now. Yeah, I want to punch that guy in the face. Well, but at the same karma, time, Karma punched him harder because he got fired. Well, at the same time, though, as much as I detest Aubrey Sitterson for that statement, I'm glad at least that he's on he's on Twitter and he's talking about comic books and trying to promote his product and not being a preachy little prick. Well, that's something. It. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah. And hmm. I don't I don't want to see any of these individuals, you know, be unsuccessful. If you can Agreed. do a good job, you can produce a good product. If you can give me something I enjoy, I don't want to see my hobby destroyed. I might not like you as an individual. I might not agree with you. I might not like you as a person. But I don't. I don't hate you to the degree where I want to see you, you know, homeless and starving on the street. I, agree. I don't think anybody deserves that. 
Uh, you're a better person than I am, Doku. Neither do I. It's not an, it's not an easy Doku, thing. Doku, to say. I agree. With, Doku, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's every, not every, an easy every, thing to say. No, but it. Trust me, the level of vitriol I have for people like Aubrey Citizen, which is why I shared that story, is through the roof. But. That said, uh, I don't want to become the thing I hate. It's very, very, very difficult to not do so. But, Ed, you know, if Aubrey Sitterson does, writes a good book, it sells well, people enjoy it, then you know what? Good job. Just stop yeah. talking about fucking politics on Twitter, you idiot. You fucking idiot. Well. Well, like I said, yeah. you're both better people than I am because you know what? If some bad happened to her, she dug her own fucking grave. Well, um, the thing is, I will say this much: if Aubrey Sitterson does fail, I'm not going to shed a tear over it. Neither am I. Nope. Because because you you can't say that no one outside of New York mourned for the people that were lost in that. Won't lost, but for the people that died in nine eleven. Hell, my dad almost died. He would have been in a, he would have been in one of those buildings, uh, one of those uh, conference rooms in the Pentagon that actually got hit. Oh, he would have he would have been hit by seventy seven. Ah, yeah, he would have been there, but that meeting got canceled, thankfully. Thankfully. I mean, oh, oh so sense. it was an empty room, huh? So yeah, it was an empty room. room. Was okay, that's why yes. the death toll was so low. There's yeah. a lot of empty rooms on that side. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that, that, now that least. being said, I suppose I suppose there is one. There is one bit. Of, there is before we get to the main dish. There is one bit of fail that I think that I think we should. I think we should cover because. Um, nice job breaking it, Activision. Oh, oh what they do now? Oh. What they do they do now? Okay, what did so, Activision do now? Okay, so here here's the thing. The the plan was to release a a remake of the of the PS3 trilogy for Spyro, kind of like what Sony did for Crash. Oh, oh I know, Ooh. I know what this is about. <laughs> and oh, the idea the idea was the whole three games in one, except that's not technically true. Only the ah. first game is on the disc, and the other two you have to you have download. to uh, download. Never go full electronic arts. Oh, uh, you had one job, Activision. No, only eight. One <laughs> job, and you blew it. You uh, blew it. The... Actually, who, let me get the clip. Who made the clip. this decision? Who, Actually, let me get the who clip. made this decision and why? Probably Kodak a Capuchin Kodak. monkey in fucking Activision. Well, uh, Kodak did uh, say that he was taking the fun out of making games. <clears throat> Uh -huh. That may have been a decade ago, but I will not forget that kind of comment. But the um, the insanity collection from Crash doesn't have this problem, so this is not. It's not like there is no precedent set no. for this sort of thing. Also, Activision. Uh, didn't work. Uh, yeah, I think I. So sorry, Flutter, but you're but um, you don't. I don't think you've got Maddie's setup. You'll have to contact him uh, well, about. That's, well, that's what happens if you got if you if you uh, if there's if you uh, try to make something great under a company run by Bobby Kotek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Fair also, point. I've, I've got a few. I've got a few more articles before we get the, get to the main dish. Okay, Wait, hold on. I just have one question. I have one question for everybody. Yes. Would you like to see? Would you like to see a remastered version of Conquer's Bad Fur Day? Because I sure as shit do. I think we yes. already got one, didn't we? We already got one, I've and never it sucked. played Conquer's Bad for a Day. Conquer, no. Wait, we Aaron? did. Yeah, live and reloaded. Aaron? Yeah, live and reloaded doesn't count because yeah, because they was that? because they censored it. It was in the Xbox. It was in the Xbox era. It was released on the Xbox. Like I said, they tried. They did that once. Yeah, I know. It. Yeah, no. Well, to me, it counts. But like I said, considering how how fucked up the gaming industry in the West is right now. 
trying to remake it is a is a freaking crapshoot. Well, yeah, not, not to, admit, to, not to mention, is in order to remake it, you have to uncensor all the content, which I doubt anyone in the gaming industry would 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 approve of. Not anybody in Microsoft, considering that they've been that they've been too busy with virtue signaling instead of putting out exclusives on the damn game. That. Yeah, that's why you give well, it that's to. That's the exact reason. That's the exact reason I want to see a Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, uh, uncensored version, because I just I want to see the that's polygon. Why, that, don't go, Mike, don't Microsoft's go, don't, that's why. Up. That's why. That's why you give. That's why you give it to the people at Sony. Well, see, I'm I'm going to make a I'm going to make a bit of a prediction that the that by the end of the year, the the um, the game the the game that's going to get the most salt. And the most sales in the fighting game scene, and I'm bringing this up because it's current because we're in the middle of Evo season, is Soul Calibur Six. Mm -hmm. Yes, it oh, is. Yes. And I'm buying it. I'm buying it just for the sake of salt. <laughs> yeah. Just to prove a point. DOA also, I just bought a shit. Techmo fucked up. Which, by the way, that brings me that brings me to my next article. Yeah, Namco Bandai. Had had an announcement at Evo, okay. season pass two. Okay. okay. This article by Anthony Ta Taormina. At Evo 2018, Tekken De Tekken Seven developer Bandai Namco revealed some of the new fighters joining the fighting game's roster with season pass two. Two familiar faces were featured prominently in the season pass two reveal trailer, but mo the most buzz about buzzed about the reveal. About the most buzzed about reveal was that of Negan from AMC's The Walking Dead TV series. Okay, you know, in, to don't in total, in total, Tekken Seven Season Pass Two will add three characters. The two returners from past Tekken games are Anna Williams, who sports an elaborate black dress in the first trailer for Season Pass Two, and Super Cop Wei Lei Le Wu Long. As expected. The footage hypes of the conflict between Anna's sister Nina, who is part of who is part of Tekken 7's main roster. Theirs is a rivalry that is extended throughout much of the Tekken series, but it will be interesting to see what new dynamics, if any, Tekken 7 adds. When Lei Wu Long was first introduced in Tekken 2, he was meant to pay homage to Jackie Chan. Since then, Lei, Lei has been a part of the series' mainline entries, which makes it surprising that he is just now joining the roster. Of course, the major talking point for the Tekken 7 Season Pass 2 trailer was will be Negan, who makes the jump from TV, from TV to video game by way of The Walking Dead. Unfortunately, the trailer only features a brief silhouette of Negan, so fans will likely have to wait until a little later for an official look at the character. As far as details are concerned, it does seem Bandai, that Bandai Namco obtained the rights to Jeffrey Dean Morgan's license for Negan, and the character will be brandishing his trademark bat, Lucille. Presumably, the barbed wire covered bat will help give Negan more range than the average Tekken character, assuming that he uses it for, as his main form of combat. All told, it appears that Tekken 7 Season Pass 2 will have a little something for everybody. Long-standing Tekken fans will see the return of two very familiar faces, while non-Tekken fans might consider checking the game out to see what Negan brings to the table as yet another crossover character. There is currently no release date for Season Pass 2, but fighting game fans can expect more in the next coming months. Tekken 7 Season Pass 2 will be available on PC, PS4, and Xbox. More Mighty Mo, you will not shut that shit down. Esports garbage is a Fucking plague, man. I've cons I have I've treated east I've treated esports as if as if it is developer quick as developer um quicksand. And mm -hmm. however, this is an interest this is an interesting guest character. Which you get you guys want to know how, how this came about? Didn't it come it came about from a troll post? Yeah, it came about from a troll tweet by Harada. He he asked people he asked people to give him their their guest character ideas and their guest character ideas and someone replied with Negan. You don't feed the trolls, kids. You, you know that kind of gives me hope that I I really hope 
somebody makes another troll post because I want to see Ezekiel so I can see a tiger bite someone's face off. <laughs> um, as much as I'd like that, I would I would rather that I would rather that a few a future one fe feature the feature the um feature the feature e either uh, go either Kiryu or Goro. Either Kazuma Kiryu or Goro. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if, yeah. Goro Maji, and if Goro Majima is there, get Mark Hamill back to voice him. God damn it. Oh, yeah. That yeah, that's fu it's funny you mentioned all this shit because I've been playing Yakuza 0 for the, the, P the PC vert port. It's fucking amazing, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a disco mini game. Oh, yeah. shit. There's, I, wonder if, I wonder if they would make yeah. Godzilla. Pocket a, circuit. Uh, yeah. They should Already make Godzilla an honorary character. Yeah, no. and I already did. A, no. uh, oh, by the way, I already did. I already did the uh, the Japanese Scientology side story already. Wait, what? Yeah, there's a Japanese sci Scientology side story in the Yakuza Zero. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. Oh, that reminds. Oh, and then and then my next article. I think this is. I think that's probably going to be the last one before we get before we get to the main event. Yes. Well, next two articles at least. These are, these will be the last two. Lightning round. Do it. Bullseye seems to be confirmed for season as the main villain of season or as the secondary villain of season three of Daredevil. Oh, so secondary season. So it's definitely King. So Kingpin's pretty much getting out of jail in the third season. Okay. Yeah. On, on the heels of Netflix's VP of content assuring everyone that Daredevil is still on track, which we'll get to that after this. An Instagram post from an actor involved in season three seems to have revealed the big bad. Rumors have circulated. Oh, so he is the main villain. He's the main villain. Oh. The, his, uh, rumors have circulated that the upcoming adventure would bring iconic Marvel villain Bullseye into Hell's Kitchen. And now a new post from actor Naquam Washington might have just confirmed it. Take a look and note the hashtags. I am copying the link address so you guys can see it. Hmm. Wait, there's more. Well, hopefully they actually do a good job this time. Naquam Washington posted a post-workout photo with Daredevil lead Charlie Cox and actor Wilson Bethel, who was rumored to have been cast as Bullseye for season three. Skeptics might still be able to dismiss the post as explicit confirmation regarding Bethel's role in the upcoming season, although Washington's hashtag Bullseye appears to confirm the previously reported casting rumors are true. Marvel has not commented on allegations that Bethel is bullseye or on Washington's post, but we'll let you know if anything, if and when the, the studio eventually clarifies. Marvel's reported casting of Wilson Bethel were, described him as an FBI agent named Steve. The character was described as, as socially awkward but, but athletic and was teased to play a key role in the ongoing feud between Matt Murdock and the Daredevil season one villain, Wilson Fisk. In the comics, Bullseye has worked for Fisk quite frequently and has been responsible for a, a few high profile deaths in the Marvel universe. The most high, the most high profile one, Electra. Provided to Com Naquam Wils Washington, Washington's post is correct, and Bethel is is Bullseye. Season three will present a version of the villain unlike what has been pre been previously seen in Marvel canon. That said, previous rumors regarding the casting did allege this telling would pre present a grounded introduction introduction, in which only furthers the or which only further solidifies the validity of the post. Whether or not he will, whether or not that's for whether or not Steve will stay grounded in his transformation to Bullseye remains to be seen. However, as it stands to reason, the character will evolve in, into a version much closer to what fans are familiar with. This includes a near superhuman level of marksmanship that, on par with the Punisher, as well as extensive experience in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is also the iconic Bullseye mark that often adorns the character's forehead which is either shown as part of an outfit or scar. Wilson Bethel's forehead looks unscathed in this gym picture, although it's a few hours on although a few hours on set with makeup could change that rather quickly. It's also Bethel could don the classic bullseye costume in season 3, although it's difficult to guess accurately. Since Mar since since Marvel has been spotty with its decision making regarding which heroes and villains get their costumes in the Netflix shows. 
Daredevil Season 3 is headed to Netflix, and fans can stay on top of any updates regarding its premiere via Cinema Blend's Superhero Premiere Guide. Those wishing to see what other television shows are out there in the following in the coming months will have plenty of luck visiting our summer and fall premiere guides. This would be very interesting. I mean, the hand is the hand has been has been vanquished, and uh, season two of Iron Fist is actually using a Daredevil villain, Typhoid Mary. So, so there's that. And now, Netflix, and now the net the v, the vice president of Netflix discusses the future of Daredevil and other Marvel shows. Netflix and Marvel's collaboration has brought some of the best superhero shows to modern television. So comic book fans are always eager to hear if the two have any more ideas or spinoff shows planned for the future. That eagerness has somewhat evolved into worry as two years after Daredevil was renewed for season three, the, the, the flagship hero drama has, has still has still had yet to get a release date. Thankfully, Netflix's vice president of original content, Cindy Holland, Cindy Holland, recently put fans' worries to rest and blamed the defenders for the long pause between season two and season three. The biggest issue was the timing of production and the la- and launching of the defenders because what what that meant is we had to shut down all of the shows so all the actors be available for the defenders. So it's more more function of that, more function of that. There is no problem with this. Se- there is no problem with this season. I think that it's fantastic. It's a real return to form in my view. Cindy Holland Holland confirmed that Daredevil season three is doing just fine, although she didn't have a release date or when for when fans are will be able to see it. As for a sequel to to the Defenders or whether Netflix and Marvel will attempt to do a mul- another multi hero team up miniseries again in the future, it's a poss- She said it's a possibility, but there are no plans at this time. That might be good for viewers who want a faster turnaround on seasons, as Holland. Holland's comments confirmed that the Defenders played a part in delaying the return of Daredevil. Cindy Holland also confirmed that both parties are always in discussions for spinoffs and referenced the success of The Punisher. Perhaps reading the minds of those in attendance at the, at the, TV, at the TCA Summer, Summer Tour, Television Critics Association, via deadline, Holland followed up by saying that she had no news to deliver regarding potential spinoffs. There's always an ongoing discussion apart about spinning off additional characters into additional properties. I don't have anything to share. As for other Netflix series and shows and rumors that Luke Cage was already starting its writer's room for season for season three, Cindy Holland said no firm decisions have been made regarding the show's future. Netflix may not have made any concrete decisions regarding Luke Cage, but the stream but the streaming giant did recently break precedent and lowered the standard Marvel episode count from 13 to 10 for season two of Iron Fist. The rumored and confirmed news both appear to show that Netflix is adapting and responding to fans' criticisms regarding turnaround times and filler stories, which means more fans suggested changes could be on the way. Iron Fist season two is scheduled to premiere on Netflix on September 2nd, on September 7th. However, Netflix has come out and said that season three of Daredevil will, will be released sometime before the end of the year. Well, here's hope. Here's hoping they they haven't fucked it up so far. Here's hoping they continue to not fuck it up. Yeah. And now, I don't know. Ladies I don't know ladies. Uh, before we go on, I don't know. Jessica Jones season two. I heard was a uh, bleh. It was fun. It was fun. It's not. It's it's not bad. By any means. Yeah, but it was like... It was it's, like it's just rote. that it doesn't have a proper villain. Yeah, it was just too rote for my taste. I didn't even see it because of because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyway, now we go now we go on to your main event of the evening. Now, as I mentioned before, Archer Warhammer had covered this little medium article by Dorian Dawes. A couple weeks ago, but I felt I felt it was apropos to cover to cover it ourselves <laughs> because this was too good to pass up. And let me take let me get the um, let me make, let me get the screen share up proper. Okay, 
Just checking, can you, this is the second time I, so far I've used screen share. Can you guys see what I'm seeing? Yes, I can. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> oh, right. this article. All right, Dorian Dawes, author of Harbinger Island and Mercs. Writing has been featured in Bitch Media and the Huffington Post. There's a couple red flags. Known gender yep. disaster, mm -hmm. another red flag. Was, like air horn. was written on July 27th. Well, let's talk about Warhammer 40k, and she uses the she uses the Trump meme regarding Warhammer, regarding the regarding the Imperial God Fist chapter. God Emperor, yep. Even though, if if there's any chapter he'd be a part of, it's not the Imperial Fist because the Imperial Fist have the biggest stick up their ass. Ah, um. So before we before we go into this i i want to i want to get a kind of baseline so how familiar are each of you with warhammer 40,000 very not not so much neither am i not so much um so you so so doku you're going to be you're probably going to be helping me out with some part with some parts of this um for everybody else if you want if you want a good non with non soy um, approach to what to what this whole thing is to what 40k is about and wh and why it has the pull that it does, I'd recommend looking up videos from people like 40k theories and of course Arch Warhammer. Mildred, I'll put it to you this way: I have been playing uh, Warhammer 40,000 since I was in third grade and. I have been reading the books since I was in about fifth grade. Nice. Nice. It's one of my favorite one of my favorite hobbies that has somehow not been infested by SJWs yet. Well they they, yes. they they've come close, but every time every time it happens. <laughs> well that's because the entire fan base is full of assholes like me. They can try. <laughs> they ain't gonna win. <laughs> Anyway, I'll go so ahead. I have not, I have not heard of this article yet. So, Mildra, let's, All right, let's let's get on with this. This should be entertaining as fuck. Let's get to our main event of the evening. <laughs> and it, it, she, it, she begins. My introduction to the four, to the forty k universe was about maybe <laughs> five, about five, maybe six years ago when my boyfriend got me into the Dawn of War franchise. Okay, good, good. The the um, Dawn of War is a good series. We don't talk about three. Well, Dawn we of only War talk. What? We 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 don't I talk about. I thought it ended it too. No. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> the original is probably one of my favorite real time strategy games ever made. I would argue Company of Heroes is be is better from Relic, but that's but it's still pretty damn solid. <clears throat> uh. Oh, hold on, I gotta go choke real quick. Uh oh. What? I'm dying. I've, I've got my second life back. Continue, <laughs> please. What? You got something against Company of Heroes? It, I wouldn't say it's comparable. Oh. It's not bad. I'm just saying comparing the two is. Well. Red flag. They're both, they're both relic games, and I pref I like Company of Heroes a bit more. Just saying. It, I'm just saying they're not comparable. Just because they're both relic games doesn't mean you should be comparing the two. Anyway, mm. the mechanics continue to hold up, and I booted up on occasion. On the aesthetic level, there's a lot about the about the 40k typo that I still love. I love the opulence, the grandeur, the absolute mythic nature of its lore. The Imperium ships are giant cathedrals floating through space. How cool is that? I agree. Now here now here's where we okay. here's where we're probably gonna get through the shit. Warhammer 40k has had many, many uh, fucking problems and a lot of flaws in its world building that have helped it to cultivate a conservative reactionary fan base that doesn't see the fascism of the Imperium as satire or parody, but as something to aspire to. Citation oh, needed. Yeah. Okay, Mildred can can we pause for literally two seconds? Because after hearing that, 
this is all I have to say. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Yep. Are we doing the drinking game again? Yeah. We're not doing the drinking game uh, again. Don't do it, Doku. You, you, you knew it, you knew what happened last time. We we what had to go last time. Okay, let's see. What are the rules? Every time I hear anything that ends in ism. Okay, then we know that it, that this time it won't kill you. <laughs> okay, so it's not as bad as the other one. Uh, still going to be bad though. I, I owe you a I owe you a case one of these days, Doku. <laughs> oh so man! Oh, oh man! Speaking All of right. which, I gotta go get a Coca Cola. <laughs> I, I gotta I gotta go film. I gotta go. Speaking of which, I I gotta. Also speaking of which, I gotta I gotta film my damn. Um... We're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take a break for five minutes to get to get to get ourselves some liquid refreshment. So <laughs> all right. Pretend, pretend that there's elevator music until until I get back. Do 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 do. Wait, did did everybody leave? Oh boy. I have a chance to be a glorious asshole right now, but I don't think I'm going to take it. Oh, and Mildred didn't even mute me. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was debating. I was like, eh, I could be a dick right now, but yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that to Mildred. But this, this article, and first they went after video games. Hollywood's always been a shit show. Then the SJWs go after comics. Then they went after Magic the Gathering. Apparently, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon have also come under fire, but I haven't been following that nearly as much. But really, SJWs, you're going to try to go after Warhammer? It, the ball's on these people. You really and think I you're going to be... you like. SJWs, you really think of all the franchises that you're going to go after? Warhammer? You really yeah. think you're going to win this that is, fight? This is going to be their fucking Stalingrad. Yeah. It, I mean, I can see Wait, comics. Walter, have, you continued, have you continued with the article? I'm, ba I'm back. Ah. Anyway. Oh, you know what? Before we continue, I really got to talk to Gator see if I can find a way to get some like sound sounds in this shit because whenever we take a break i i got this little um looping uh smooth jazz number that i did for one of my videos <laughs> i was thinking, thinking i play that during the intermission yeah yeah we need to we need to get something we need to get something like that. we need to spruce yeah, up the monastery a little um, yeah it's what yeah it's called it's what i call the hot takes it was it's the hot take sacks from the um from that uh that video I did it's around last Christmas about uh August Ames. Oh, I was gonna oh, say yeah. All, oh, all, yeah. all three of you all three of you left. I was actually just rambling here to myself so the audience didn't get bored. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah, basically Warhammer forty K, what are they thinking? This is gonna be their Stalingrad. Exactly. Again, hang comics, on, hang on. I never can see that. your enemy when he is making a mistake. Anyway, let's and let's move can, on before we get before we get sidetracked again. Yeah, gotcha. It's debated gotcha. a lot whether or not that Warhammer whether or not that Warhammer 40k was originally meant to be a satire of that of Thatcher era conservatism. But that's not the way the franchise uh, presented today. Drink. Oh god, drink. Thatcher, Thatcher, and the prompt thing is. The, the only UK thing needs that shit. The only thing backing that up is GW being a British company, and it was made. It was made in the eighties, mm -hmm. but really, and the original version of World War Two, the original version of Warhammer Forty Thousand, known as Rogue Trader, is so far removed 
from its current form, they're completely different games. It has more in common with, uh, what was it, Blood Bowl? Blood Bowl was basically them making it... Blood Bowl was an actual parody. That was a parody of American football. Ah. Yeah. Besides, what is what is their, their beef with fucking Maggie Thatcher? She was probably only halfway decent in, head of state of the UK in the last, what? Since Churchill, I'll Jeez. take her over to re- I'll take her over to Teresa. Oh, ten yeah. times over. I will, I will she, take her on Teresa people. And she and she oh, hated commies. And she hated commies. Anyway, well, so did Hitler. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. she goes. And for anyone about to argue with me on that, I'm going to refer to this meme to save us all some time. Thank. Satire requires a clarity of purpose and target, lest it be mistaken what? for and contribute to that it, which it intends to criticize. <laughs> so, in other words, you want it to be idiot proof, and that is not possible because there there can always be a bigger idiot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, i.e., the idiot the idiot that wrote this fucking screed. Oh wait, Mil- Mildred, can I read this out loud because this is abusing? Go ahead. Satire requires a clarity of purpose and target, least it be mistaken. Lest. lest. Oh, lest. Ah, thank you. Lest it be mistaken for and contribute to that which it intends to criticize. Oh, <laughs> where's my projection machine? <laughs> I think I think it's currently being used by IMAX. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> fuck, fuck that! That's a that's Omnimax levels of projection. I I, I, I actually like going, I feel like I going over that to the shirt. Science Museum of Minnesota would, to see that kind of projection. Yeah, yeah. That's like I said. Yeah. By the way, if you don't know what Omnimax is, um, it's a it's a it's a theater theater in the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Yeah, I, I know about that place. I've been there. You know what? Awesome. I just got to say this because I think it's a brilliant idea. Can somebody open up a Teespring or like whatever t-shirt shop and just take that statement but reverse all the lettering? <laughs> hmm. What, well, like mirror write it? Yeah, like and, do, anagram, give, anagram, give it a good yeah, mirror effect. Yeah, make, make everything an anagram. <laughs> Give it a very good mirror effect. It it'll be it'll be fucking hilarious. And I rock enough, still, I could probably I do that. Buy that shirt in, a, in, a, in the drop of a hat. Yeah, by the way, uh, I wouldn't do for T T Spear probably get banned for hate speech. I think Duke over uh, uh, yeah, crypt, probably would. Crypto fashion. Uh, actually, yeah, crypto fashion would probably be the better option. Yep. And anyway. Um she goes on to say, when the fan base is a bunch of Trump supporters photoshopping this weird, ugly, infant-looking mug on the oh, picture. You know what? Emperor, drink. Drink. Guzzle. Drink. Drink. Screw it. Guzzle. Drink. Guzzle. Guzzle. I think we can assume weird. that 40K has failed in the No, 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 no. Doku? Guzzle. Just for this. Yeah, because oh. that this, this whole paragraph's cancer. And I yeah. heard ism, so that's another that's another drink. Yeah. Now, now it's just water. They aren't Remain. portraying Trump in shining golden armor, conquering his enemies Drink. to make fun of him. <laughs> Drink. That was Trump. Drink. <laughs> yep. Once again, I am campaigning to have Trump derangement syndrome in the DSM six. It probably will get there. Yep. Too sweet me for the love of God, brother. <laughs> Too sweet man. Anyway, and he goes, so let's talk about my issues with this franchise. The demonization of female sexuality and queerness. Oh, and, God. And no, that, that, that counts. That that counts. Demonization and queerness in conjunction, that counts. Drink. Yep. And <laughs> using an image of sl- of a Slanesh sorcerer. If that's a oh, female. wait. Scroll back up. That, was, that Slanesh sorcerer was hot. <laughs> uh, like there's no tits, like dude. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. It's good artwork. It's good artwork. I don't judge here. I'm, at I'm not an ism. The art, at least they source the artists. And I'll be 75. Yeah, yeah. I know who that is, and they do good. They've they've done good work for for Warhammer. Degenerate. 
It's a word often used by fascists. Drink. 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 As a catch-all for anyone with a gender identity or sexuality that they despise. It counts. Drink. You know, you know there's a no, reason drink. they call... Aaron? Aaron? There's a re- drink. Yeah. There's a reason that they call they call them degenerates the because you go... These freak... Listen, I don't care if they have their parades, but come on. There's kids there. Stop stop dirt. Stop dirty dancing out in public. Do it in the goddamn clubs. Jesus. Yes. Hey man, I was I was painting uh Slash demon titties when I was like eight years old. Damn. Yeah, and am I, anyway, am it, goes, I the, it goes on to say for Nazis, drink. 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 This extends Score. even to, this extends even to cishet couples and inter mm. and interracial Drink. relationships. Drink. Bullshit, it's your it's it's the Score. offended brigade that gets that gets over that gets a bit over that and school. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this people. I've idea. seen more than one Twitter tank tanky use it to describe sex workers and trans people. Yeah, Drink. most of them are on your side. So um. Drink. Drink. School. Stanky. Uh, that's projection again, man. <laughs> Degeneracy is Slanesh's domain, a being of unfiltered sexuality, worshipped by succubi, queers, and kinksters. Um, Great. it's also it's also worshipped by 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 Caligula, politicians, and basically anybody who doesn't know how to say no. <laughs> so, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Tune critic Y two K. Yeah, probably. It's, this is a common mistake. A lot of people believe that Slanesh's domain is sex. Which While that is. can certainly be part of it, that is not the whole picture. Slanesh is excess, decadence. Somebody who somebody who loves eating cotton greed. candy by the butt. Bu- the, basically, greed. Yeah. yeah. Read, yeah. Read Tony Montana close to the end of Scarface, where he's snorting cocaine from the fucking big-ass mound. Uh-huh. Anyway. Androgyny and queer sexuality is lumped in with sadomasochism, rape, and sexual abuse. Citation, please. Uh, show your work, please. Citation, now, yes, please. Yes, yes, there is the whole fact that in the 40k universe, hmm. the Eldar created Slanesh through their sheer unre- unrestrained murder-fucking but the point with that was was the was how just completely beyond decadent that they became, and an entire race of psychically sensitive decadents created well the embodiment of that. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Okay, this individual is irritating the shit out of me. Slanesh is not about decadence; it's about hedonism. You see, this uh, this is the thing. This is why I hate about these these, these idiots. I mean. It's like they 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 do as much fucking re- they just do as much research, no more research than any of these idiots over at Geek and Sundry would ever do. Mm-hmm. And well, anyway. Slanesh, Slanesh is not decadent. Slanesh is hedonistic. Mm-hmm. There is a difference. Yep. Um, he goes stories regarding Slanesh and her and her cult. First lie: Slanesh does not Slanesh does not have a gender. Typically involve beautiful Slash women seducing, su- yep, seducing faithful imperial guards or space marines into their beds, making them vulnerable to demonic possession. Okay, and your point? Sometimes her cultists are portrayed as being androgynous, light young men trapping otherwise straight and masculine men into an act of queerness. It's gay panic for space operas. Okay, name me where that actually happens. You're making this out of context. You're taking this out of context. Oh my god. It's Warhammer, not a goddamn chick tract. If each of the chaos gods represent a different brand of horror in this grim dark universe, Slanesh is the horror of sexuality not controlled by the state. Bullshit. It's why queerness and female sexuality is considered every bit as terrifying and full of malice as rape and sexual abuse. Oh, here we go with this rape shit again. I think that counts as a drink, right? School. Yes. School. Drink. <laughs> and if you, if you think that fascists don't read into this as well, drink. let me refer to you. <laughs> let me refer to this comment from 
YouTube white supremacist and fascist bodybuilding <laughs> rapist <laughs> <and> golden one <laughs> towards leftist trans YouTuber contrapoints. Let me look up this the golden one for, just for a second. Oh my god! Let me let me do that too. Oh my god! That sentence, that that paragraph in itself was pathetic. This is it? Yeah. Good God! It's full can, of buzzwords, we, full of garbage. Jesus Christ! Can we okay, actually can we hear bunch, that? Can we hear that sentence again, Mildred? Can you reread that? Just that la so that it's... last sentence. Yeah, uh, I need to hear that one again. And if you don't think that fascists don't read into this, uh, if you think fascists read into don't read into this as well, let me refer to you this comment from YouTube white supremacist and fascist bodybuilding doofus, <laughs> the golden one towards leftist trans YouTuber contra points. Oh god damn! I need to, I need to go to the store. I need to go get to the store and get me some goddamn ranch dressing because that's a lot of buzzword salad right there. Yep. Also. Goku, does that count as a drink? Does that whole sentence count as a drink? That that is indeed a drink. School, yeah. school. <laughs> that oh, that is. Oh, and I'm, that is I'm a looking real at a special at treat video. right there. I found the guy, and I'm lo I'm looking at his uh, vi I'm looking at his videos, and <clears throat> really, I don't. I, um, not that bad. Uh, no, it's and interesting it's that she even. I'm guessing it's a she that wrote this article. Yeah, and every every time I see, from what I see of it, he, he's basically play, he's he's doing this. Um, he's he's doing a very caricature. He's doing his own little caricature. Yeah, I don't really like contra points. Don't get me wrong, but oh. Uh, it, Are you, anyway, go, ahead, go ahead go ahead and read the comment, Meldra. Yes. All right, let's look at let's look at what he said. You will be spared from the Inquisition as you have observed the correct correct levels of admiration for my aesthetics, smiley face. <laughs> However, in regard to the de the degeneracy question, I have no problems with individuals like you. In fact, I rather like you, no homo. <laughs> However, I have a massive problem with the porn industry, for example, an industry which destroys women's lives and oh, saps and life okay. from young men. Lastly, you are indeed a perfect arch nemesis, like a demonet of Slanesh to my golden Primark. Uh, <laughs> school, school, <laughs> school. Yeah, I like contra points. I now don't this? like a lot of what his points are, but he has a sense of humor. So I can. I can look past it. Mm -hmm. uh, mercy it bears, it bears repeating. If the intention of Warhammer 40K is to satirize this type of fascist policing of Frank, sexuality, uh, school. then it, school. it falls completely on its head when fascists use it as an example Frank. referring to degeneracy. <laughs> You're the one BRB, taking this serious BRB, when it's... BRB, guy, BRB, guy, BRB guys refilling my, refilling my tumbler. <laughs> yeah, we're marking... Bring in a keg of schnapps. That's two drinks, by the way. I know that. <laughs> oh, you better know it. Yeah, like I said, we I got the schnapps, man, on my speed dial. Oh, who is this person and why? Who who hired this individual? Eh, probably took probably probably well, took me, uh, a Work it's a medium shit. article. They'll hire anybody. <laughs> Fair point. Let's see, but it's going on the assumption that Warhammer is trying to is trying to set is trying to satirize fascism, which has never been which has never been the point. And back. welcome Andrew. back. So we'll we'll continue on going. Fortunately, Contrapoints took this strange backhanded compliment in good stride. And had a T-shirt made out of the idea, "Enemy of the Imperium Contrapoints." So, in other words, the only person who's taking this seriously is you. It, it's a, it's a tabletop game. Oh, what the hell? You know what? Just out of, just because of the ridiculous idiocy of the person writing this article, drink. School. Yeah, remember these are the these are the same 
These are the same type of people that thinks it's perfectly legal to go around uh, and go around and jumping people, people at, at bars near conventions. You know what? It's okay to punch a Nazi. Let me see you punch a space marine. <laughs> oh, space space marine will, will tear you. They can't. They can't reach that high. Those those guys reach up to eight feet. Oh, yeah. and besides, it'd still be fun to watch them try. Yeah, but space marine will tear your both your arms out and beat you to death with them. <laughs> That's exactly what would be fun to watch them try. Anyway, he goes on to say, and you know what? That's fine. It's cool if queer people want to appropriate Slanesh and steal the idea of degeneracy away from the Nazis to make it into something cool. Great. School! That doesn't School. mean this was Dean's workshop's idea or doesn't speak to a massive problem within the lore of the 40k universe. You know what? Goal for this for the simple fact that sh that she tried to pull a yeah but yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree that's a drink that entire yeah. paragraph is a drink yes goal <laughs> queerness is portrayed as an actual threat to the universe women in control of their own sexuality or sh or shown as demonic predators offering discuss discussions Skull! about the Oh my god. About the Imperium's cartoonish fascism, one of the defenses of their Drink. actions is that the universe is so horrifying that fascism becomes justified. Oh, you, you made me choke on my own spit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. by that extent, this justifies choke. fascism in this universe, and that makes me want to scream. <laughs> I can just I can just I can just imagine that this person does a full on re. But Oh, the, yes, the Warhammer. Here, <laughs> let me make something clear. Fans of Star Trek want to live in the Star Trek universe. Fans of Star fans Wars of, want to live in the Star Wars universe. Fans of Dragon Ball want to live in the Dragon Ball universe. Fans of Assassin's Creed want to live in the Assassin's Creed universe. Fans of God of War want to live in the God of War universe. Fans Let's of, not get crazy. <laughs> you know what? I just have to admit. I have to admit. Fans of the Arkhamverse want to live in the Arkhamverse. Yep, but I have to admit, no every time I masturbate, <laughs> every time I masturbate, I say Kamehameha. <laughs> I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. Anyway, nope. Doku, <laughs> go for 10. But nobody, <laughs> nobody who is a fan of 40K wants to live in the 40K universe because there are numerous, because the amount of things that want to kill you are several times over more numerous than the things that don't. What doesn't so want basically the Chicago? Universe? That's that's the question I have. What does not want to kill you in the Warhammer universe? So the Warhammer universe is basically Chicago. Hell, 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 kind of. hell. Yu-Gi-Oh fans want to live in the Yu-Gi-Oh universe. Yeah, but the the point the point is is that. Because here's the thing, every piece of medium regarding 40k always starts with we're fucked, and it's only going to get rougher from here. <laughs> okay, yeah. wait, I take it back. There is one exception to this. The Tau. If you're part of the Imperium, the Tau will actually let you live with them assuming that, you know, you mind your P's and Q's. The Tau are... Oh, the great good. Yeah, but the tower are a bunch of commies. Benevolent. Well, yeah, they're they're commies, but I mean, dude, like, what are? Look at your other options. <laughs> at that point, yeah, communism actually might work. Mm -hmm. It's also why it's a fantasy universe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And anyways, goes the lack of any meaningful resistance. In every historical case of real life fascism or dictatorial Drink. state, oh my God. there are always those who stand up against oppression. People are mm. too creative, too clever, and too damn stubborn to tolerate authoritarian missions for long. Oh, double drink. Double drink. Drink. double drink. Double drink. That's projection. That's drink too. Rebellions may not Skull. always succeed, but they exist no matter mm. how small. There are always activists and fighters and rebels wherever you go. Oh, my resistance. Yeah, I think that counts as a drink, too. Yeah. My resistance. I'll take me a bump on me fucking knee. Yeah, that's a drink. School. Yes. Except except in the grim darkness of the far future, apparently, everyone is either a mindless abomination chanting out there for the emperors or a chaos cultist. You okay, really you know what? That whole thing, 
That whole thing right there, that's a drink. Projection, not exactly. Not that a drink, that's a complete lie. If that was the case, the, Inquis the Inquisition would not have would not be fighting enemies both from without and within. There would not be such a thing as the dark age of technology. There would not. There would be no. There you would not have the no. You would not have an imperial thought of the day that reads a suspicious mind is a healthy mind. Oh, oh the Grey Knights, the Sisters of Battle. It or. Uh, what's the well, uh, what's the librarian? Like what, it sounds like what this person wants is that is there to be some sort of Star Wars style re rebel rebellion, except once again this isn't Star Wars. You know what? I so think I think there's a very appropriate quote here from uh, I forget which book it's actually from, but it's quoted quite frequently. An open mind is like a fortress, with its gates unbarred and unguarded. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Warhammer forty k in a nutshell. Too sweet, too sweet for the love of God. <laughs> um. He goes. He goes. The closest I've seen to an imperial citizen questioning the legitimacy of the Imperium is that of Syphus Cain, the hero of the Imperium. Hmm. So there was a bit of a you know, just out of just captain. out of pure vitriol and irritation. Drink for bringing up Kaphiaphus pain. Yeah. That school. If this if this person brings up Kaphiaphus Cain in this article, spouting this fucking nonsense, oh, I'm, I am now yeah. somewhat legitimately angry. Drink. <laughs> yep. Now you know how I feel. Last week, school. Mm -hmm. There's always a bit of an oddball in 40K's cast of zealots. His motivations are not portrayed as noble, but rather selfish and cowardly. You know what? Drink. That yeah. works. Drink. Unlike other commissars, he doesn't blow the heads off his soldiers because he likes a healthy meat shield between him and the endless horrors he faces. He does not wish to die for the Empire, and he often blusses into something we don't ever see in 40k lore. Incompetence and fools within the Imperium. So your hero, oh, so you, the you, the person you idolize as your as your hero in this setting, is some is somebody who is somebody who is a, who is basically forty k's equivalent of, no he he is at times forty k's equivalent of Hercule Satan. And, and that's not even, that's not even, ah, uh, wrong, yeah, wrong on that? so many levels. Doku, yeah. Doku, <laughs> if I may. Wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. The thing You're is with wrong. Yeah, that guy looks like a uh, universe, though. We like have the last chancers. We have the last chancers, and they're an elite unit of complete assholes and criminals who have been conscripted into the Imperial Guard and set into the worst hell holes that you could ever imagine. Just for the sake of, yeah, we won't execute you. But yeah, they're basically the suicide squad of Warhammer 40k. You have mm -hmm. the last chancers. Almost everyone who is conscripted into the Imperial Guard, they don't do it by choice. They're literal conscripts. It's so, mandatory. It's, it's not. It's not optional. It's mandatory. Oh, yeah. so basically, so Starship Troopers, I guess. No, it's even worse than Starship Troopers. You don't have a choice. And if you say no, well, someone like Kafiakis Kane, it, a commissar will come and shoot you in the head. The and reason why commissars will shoot it will shoot will shoot IGs is be, is because though is because those IGs have shown cowardice in the line of duty. Because it literally, literally, if you turn away from the enemy, you'll get shot. Ah, they they don't even give you a chance. They just all they have to do is think that you're running away, and they will fucking shoot you. <clears throat> it, you don't have a choice. And let's not even get into the fact that if you're suspected of harboring uh, a Zeno, an alien, or being a cultist. Or just going against the emperor in general, you get killed. BRB, you guys need to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, Disney. literally, they'll they'll kill you for any reason. They they don't even need to have actual proof. They're literally Judge Dread on steroids. And here we have a badass a badass image of Ka- of Caiaphas Kane and the and this person having the subtitle of "I love this smug asshole and his stupid face." Yeah, it looks oh like my god! Like drink, drink, fucking drink. Ugh. Does this person even understand the lore and the world behind Warhammer Forty Thousand? Probably. I'm, not. Get, I'm guessing that I'm guessing that they just played Dawn of War and then didn't and then didn't like how the rest of the the rest of the one the rest of it doesn't match their fantasy version of it. But she goes on to say, "This great fascist empire and so many drink. other works of, drink. of yep drink of, of fiction and adaptations Ooh. is often depicted mm-hmm. as a smooth running organized machine." No, it fucking that isn't. Counts as no. a, um, I think that counts as a drink. Skull. No, it and no, it it fucking is not a smooth running organized machine. Absolutely not. And they're back. You have Bra- you have Brazil levels of bureaucracy. You've you've got you've got high lords backstabbing other high lords. You have you have of uh, you have organi- Hell, in the in the uh, in the Beast Arises book series, you have you have this giant pi- you have this giant pissing match between the, between the Inquisition and the Officio Assassinorum. Ah, well, and also y- you have entire storylines of planets that decide mm, we're gonna not be part of the Imperium. And the uh, Imperium's response is they're not going to go to war with you. They're not going to deploy the Imperial Guard. It's just straight up, okay, that's what you want to do? Exterminate us. Boom. Wipe the whole planet clean of life. Mm-hmm. They don't give a shit. Or, or just, you, just, uh, just, use, just use virus bombs and then, and then a few, and then a century later, all right, time to repopulate this planet. Oh yeah! Oh, the virus bombs are even worse. That's a that's not a fun fate. No. At least with exterminatus, you get burned at an instant. It's like a nuclear bomb on a planetary level. With a virus bomb, you literally bubble up and turn into basically goo, and then you become fertilizer. Yep. And and that's how it works? He goes. They are all eager to serve the emperor because they are the heroes, and that's what heroes in this universe do. There are no, there are no heroes in forty k. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Who is writing this article? An idiot. Who's writing this article. Cyphus Kane calls bullshit. He's an opportunistic scoundrel and recognizes the same patterns of behaviors in others. Through Fuck his it. drink, that counts. Drink. Score. Into- this organized joke, it actually should be represented as. Except it is represented as that. You know what? I heard represented three times. Drink. Yeah. Skull! Too often, the Imperium is portrayed as the Nazis wish to see themselves in Drink, Nazis, the drink. Skull! And I'm, I'm, I'm putting in another drink for, tri- for dragging Triumph of the Will into this, because regardless of, regardless of that film, it was... How, how many are you on so far, Doku? Beer number four. <laughs> God damn. Oh, God. Out of 15? It, out of 15. You're not even well, halfway done. Damn. No, I had... Let me let me count real quick. Um, oh, I have six left. <laughs> this article is fucking going to kill me. <laughs> this is this deja vu. I remember us saying this exact same thing two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, this is this is not gonna end well. Heroic music and epic marshes accompany waving banners and men charging bravely into battle. The cries of for the Emperor are done with inspirational beats. These shows of power are meant to intimidate enemies and rouse allies. And drink. How is how is Skull. that? Different from, 
any army in hit any army or any prop any any army in history. Yeah, history. Uh... <clears throat> you know what? That counts as a second drink. Just yeah, for the pure school. Yep. It, re read read that sentence again. What the? Read, Who read is this person? Read it again, Mulder. Heroic music and epic marches accompany waving banners and men charging bravely into battle. The cries of For the Emperor are done with inspirational beats. These shows of power are meant to intimidate enemies and rouse allies. Like every military tactic that involves a charge since history? What the... Blah. He goes, this by itself um, wouldn't necessarily be a problem. Even the stormtroopers in Star Wars and the oh, First drink, Order drink, utilized drink, imagery drink. pulled straight from Nazi Spoiling propaganda. Chug! Fucking chug! Wait, actually, wait, 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 wait. Melzer, before you continue, let me... Ah, uh, no, I don't want to refill it a third time. No, we had stormtroopers and Star Wars in the same sentence. Well, we also, it also brought up the First Order, so I'm saying Chug anyways because fuck The Last Jedi. Fuck. All right. <laughs> and here's hoping that we don't kill Doku. And did we, did, did, did Star Wars <laughs> take, take some, take some nods from, from the, from the Nazis? Yeah. During, the yeah, empire, the empire, yeah, the Empire did, and the First Order is pretty much the Third Reich. Yeah, that, but that's uh, kind of the whole here's, point. Behind here's the them. problem. Here's the problem. Warhammer Forty Thousand is not Star Wars. Agreed. No, it's, <laughs> it's even worse. Right. But still, make it clear that these fascists are the villains. Drink. Their actions are condemned by the test. Drink. Drink. drink like two drinks. And school. once again, it comes. Once again, it comes back to the whole thing of she wants a. She wants a Surgeon General's warning level <laughs> sticker on a Warhammer Forty Thousand book saying, "No, saying no, the Imperium is not the he is not the hero," and every every forty k fan is going, "No shit." If we wanted no if we, the hero if in we forty, wanted a, if we wanted a fairy tale good versus evil, we'd go and buy that. Mm -hmm. That's never been the appeal of Warhammer <laughs> Fantasy or Warhammer Forty K. Who is this person and? Who who writes an article like this that knows anything about Warhammer? And this is this is mind boggling to me. It Agree. Games Workshop, on the other hand, has decided to start marketing their franchise towards children, in which the bloodthirsty, xenophobic zealots, the space marine, are often depicted on the yeah, official I website. I heard xenophobic drink. Okay, okay, start start chugging. They're bringing up Warhammer Adventures. Oh my oh. god. Hold on. I you brought you brought up Warhammer and Fishes. You never bring up Warhammer no, and Fishes. I, I need I need a cigarette. <laughs> what the fuck? Here's hoping oh that you don't god. smoke inside. Now I I at least have some standards. Only okay, some. Good. good. Only some standards. But yes. All right. The, Warhammer the item that she's referencing is is a picture from the fan, from the site that was promoting Warhammer Adventures, saying, "Space Marines, sworn sworn defenders of humanity. Space Marines are the ultimate warriors, graced with superhuman speed, strength, and stamina, genetically engineered to fight in the countless wars of the forty first millennium. These towering giants have two hearts, three lungs, and blood that is immune to all known poisons. Organized into chapters, the Emperor's chain sword wielding champions are feared and respected throughout the galaxy." Bravest of all are the heroic Ultra Smurfs, clad in blue and white power armor. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Pause. Mildred, please pause. Ultra <laughs> Smurfs. What? That's, that's, their, that's the name for the Ultra Marines. I was about to ask. Ultra Smurfs? Is that what it actually says? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, just, I had to know. They plunge into battle, risking all to protect the Imperium against the forces of evil. Then she, she goes on to say, Warhammer 40,000 is so very close to how fascists see the world. They are beset on all sides by degeneracy, threatening to choke out their way of life, and an ever-present foreign, re Xenos, menace, 
seeking to take all that they have from them. In their minds, authoritarianism is the only way is the only means of survival in this grim, dark future. The portrayal oh, of genocidal imperialists as heroes, particularly in this day and age, is irresponsible and personally overshadows much of the fun I could be having with this franchise. Oh, by except, the way, ism, drink. Yeah, except yeah. for the fact Slow. that the um, that 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 um, the Xenos, the demons, and the traitors are just as genocidal as everybody else. Yeah, it is there's... very much. It is an extremely dog eat dog world. Yeah, I literally, literally played a race of aliens that comes from outside of our galaxy that yeah, wants the, to the pyramids, and when they take. When they decide that when they decide to om nom a planet, they om nom the fucking planet. There is nothing left but a big ass rock after they they're either, done. They literally, the planet. Planet. literally the whole planet. Literally the whole planet. Yeah, they it, literally just, eat just, just just the whole context. planet. Just for context, this is how the Tyranids work. They come out of outer space, they find a planet, they kill everything on it. And, and then they, they have these it. things called ripper. Yeah, then they have these things called ripper swarms. It's even worse. These things called ripper swarms, which are basically like land piranhas, chew everything up, alive or dead, doesn't matter. Then they shit it out. It goes into a bio pool, and then they're. I guess you could call them spaceships, but they're really basically just gigantic, you know, space whales. Think like Avengers. And they suck the biomass out of the planet and they use it to regurgitate and then breed more Tyranids that then go on to the next planet to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ah, it, that's, that's Tyranids in a nutshell. They're not. They're not a. They're not a friendly bunch, to say the least. It's not someone you're gonna negotiate with. They. No. They just want your biomass. Hmm. No. The nego The negotiation is: do we do we shoot it or do we or do we flame it? It exterminatus. And does it need yeah. more? And does it need more DACA? They're Burn the village. DACA. Burn the fucking planet. Burn, burn the it. village. Yeah, destroy it. Destroy the whole fucking planet. It, Exterminate. That's the only goal you have. Burn it, salt it, just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, and, and that's what's that's what's more terrifying about the Tyranids. Their genetic structure with uh gene stealers. They will they will literally genetically infiltrate you and that it will, it will basically genetically fuck you. Yeah, it, well, it draws the uh, the hive fleet, as they call them. Uh, uh, you get in, you get infected with a a gene, hence the name gene stealers. You get infected with that, you become a beacon, and uh, then the hive fleet comes and finds you, and it fucks your shit up. Yep. Anyways, she, she goes on to say, it's getting a lot harder to love 40K, especially when the franchise continues to lovingly portray fascists as good men, demonizes queer people, and repeats xenophobic talking points as if they were actually worth considering. Jesus Christ. That's, that's the whole point of the game. It It's a terrifying world. Like It's a terrifying universe that you live in. How are you even going to try to politicize? This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely uh, ridiculous. I can't believe you're, thing. I can't you're talking believe about a world that literally wants to kill you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Goes on to say, I can't blame Trump supporters for photoshopping their beloved leader's head onto that emperor. That's the world they want to create. <laughs> Start fucking chugging. Yep. <laughs> How many beers have you gone through now, Doku? Uh, I only have two left. Oh, Jesus. Boy. Yeah. This is fun. This is a fun game. I enjoy this. 
And you don't even sound drunk. Jesus. Ed, I have Irish and German blood in me. What can I say? <laughs> oh. uh, uh. Yep, he goes, there are ways to fix this, of course. Actually show the space marines for the genocidal brainwashed cultists they are. Drink. Skull. Don't we do that already? Yeah, I have I'm guessing I'm guessing this person has never heard of Conrad Kurz. <laughs> oh, granted, this Conrad person Kurz makes me want to smack but, my um, head into a wall. The short the short version is is Conrad Kurz is what happens when you take Batman and you make and you make him a lot less nice. Uh, it, I don't think this person understands what the premise of Warhammer 40,000 really is. No. Because center the narratives around those struggling to survive and resist the horrors of the Imperium. Oh, oh, you want oh, you want a victim story. Uh, you know what? I think that counts as a drink. Yeah. Bring some, yeah. Bring some oh. actual complexity into this universe. <laughs> there are there already is there already is. Mm-hmm. I mean, after after all, if you even though even though he is a horrible horrible person, I love reading the story of Conrad Kurz simply because he is such a complex figure. By reason. Wait, 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 whoa! Hold, hold up. What? <laughs> what? No, 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 no! <laughs> Don't go. I got something better. <laughs> that is. Oh, that's that's beyond laughable. Dokil? That is a blatant Dokil, instead, fucking instead lie. Of, instead of what I say, this <laughs> bitch. Oh, you get slapped for that. It. That is a blatant. That is a blatant fucking lie. Everything this moron just said that she didn't. I'm guessing she. Well, the, the last the last sentence. Like. There, is bring in some queer characters who aren't chaos demons for fuck's sake. Well, that was never the point of the story. It, oh, it was basically just commentary on don't ask, don't tell. And that wasn't even the point of the story. Yeah, basically what she's doing, she wants us to, wants Warhammer 40k to do the same thing that every other hack hack's been doing to the franchise. To, to various franchises, play fucking diversity lotto with the fucking cast. Which, Aaron, speaking of diversity, I use a different term instead of diversity. Harmony. <laughs> Harmony. And the thing is, that was actually a good story, too. The, the fact that the character had a specific sexual orientation was not the point of the story. No, it's only the point of somebody who's so... Whenever I hear somebody talk talk about how we need to have how we need to have a, a queer character in this particular in a particular medium I'm, I, for representation, I have to I always end up saying, "Are you so in, are you so insecure that you need a, that you need someone in fiction to look exactly like you to validate yourself?" Oh my God, what is this? It's like it's like what what, what are they going to do? Yes, and um, what are they going to do? Put a fucking commissar in every fucking uh, work of fiction from here on in. Just like as, a, doing as, a quick aside, as a quick aside, since I since I've got since I've got Flutter up here on this, I'm going to say something that is going to be co- that is going to be controversial. I was not one of the people who was jumping for joy when it was revealed that Shiro in Legendary Defenders is gay. Especially, uh, uh, since, neither neither was I. Neither was I. Granted, I had started, they, I had they said that the reason why they didn't kill him off is because they didn't want to kill off the gay guy. I was like, no, oh no, if no, it would fit it. The, that story is not a is not about is not is not about him. And if he's run his course through that story, then then give him the axe. Doesn't doesn't matter orientation. Mm. You know, I got to say this that's about that's understandable. That's understandable, Meldrum. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to say this about character sexuality. I. I don't really care if they're heterosexual or homosexual. I really don't care because I don't want to know a character's sexuality. I, I just don't care. Yeah, it's uh, like that. It's I like want that, a decent character. Yeah, it's I like don't that care. If, sketch. Yeah, I don't care if it's a really hot chick that's a lesbian. 
I don't care if it's a fucking rip dude who's gay. I don't, I, I don't want I don't to know their sexuality. I don't care, I don't I don't care, care. If, it's a, if it's a male character turned into a female. Yeah, I like like I don't give a Hogarth. shit. Like like with yeah, Jared Hogarth. Give me, yeah, give me, yeah, give me a badass character who can beat the ever living crap out of somebody. I don't care if he's gay. I really do not give two flying fox. Give me a badass character that can beat the crap out of somebody else. Give me a give me a chick that's in an attractive outfit or it an interesting outfit at least and it, it give me a give me a female character that you know something at least that makes sense. And with a female character, yeah, it tends to be a very form fitting outfit. So give me a female character that can beat the crap out of someone. I don't need to know their sexuality and I don't really care. Yeah, it's like this. It's like just give me someone who can fight. Yeah, it's like that living color sketch. It's like Jim Carrey going around saying, hey, guess what? I'm gay. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't need to know their sexual preferences and yeah. nor do I care. I I don't care if Kasumi from Dead or Alive is a lesbian. I do not care about her sexual preference. Even all even I know if, is if that, if that was, if that was that actually the case, works. Um, Doku, if that was actually the case, that opens up some very disturbing implications. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, oh, they definitely do emphasize the panty shots. But I was I was talking about I was talking about the but, whole love hate relationship she has with. With Ayane because the two of them are technically half sisters. Well, yeah. that's a completely different topic of conversation. Yeah, let's not go but, full. We don't go full Lannister here in the monastery. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> he goes on to say, "I doubt any of this is actually going to happen, though, because the Space Marines are popular, and Games Workshop wants to continue to sell miniatures and video games." Exactly. So they'll keep oh, pandering hey, to the most hey, Mildra, toxic elements. Mildra, I am. I, I do have to ask you. Which one is hotter, Ayane or, Ayane or Kasumi? You know what? I'm going to pull a Tommy Dreamer here. Take them both. I'm hardcore. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. No, no, no. You, on, you only get one choice. Ayane. Uh, you know, Doku, no. no. this isn't by or sell. No. Nope. Ayane or Kasumi, you get one choice. I'm going to kick your ass so hard after this. No. <laughs> no. I'll tell, okay, okay, fine. I'll, I'll go first. I'll tell you who I'd pick. I'm going with Ayane. I see that you're a man of culture as well. It, I, I like Ayane. It, because she has, I, I don't know. I don't know why I would pick Ayane, but. I'm still, I'm, my yeah, answer is still I'm that I'm picking both. <laughs> Fuck it! I'll... Sorry, Both my... is not an option, motherfucker. Sorry. It is now. <laughs> well, it's my, it's my damn show. So since we're making up options, I'm taking <laughs> Helena because of the swimsuit. What? Oh right, right. yeah. And, anyway, oh. before we get up, before Helena we also has the booty. Again, he goes, Helena has the booty. What? Sure. Goes so they'll keep pandering to the most toxic elements of their fan base. Drink. Whenever I hear <laughs> these people say toxic, I always end up having to make the. Re I always end up having to make that reference. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Exactly. I, uh, no, 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 no. School! Yes! Yep. Oh, uh, son of a... All right. I need to open another beer. <laughs> it makes it difficult for me to keep enjoying this world, even for all the fun and shenanigans it promises. Unless I get to play as the orcs. I love you those know, silly green boys forever. You know what? You know what? Fuck it. Green boys. Beer. Drink. <laughs> you know what? Skull. Pistol whip the... She said shenanigans. Pistol whip the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> drink. Pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. Uh, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Read, give. Aaron? Oh. Aaron? Yeah. Bitch. Thank you. Oh. Give Dorian... I'm, we are not giving her a round of applause because in her world, I, a wasn't, of applause no, I, I wasn't. I was doing Spade Aces gimmick. I, I know, I know, but um, 
we cannot give Dorian Dawes here a round of applause because she because she would accuse us of appropriation. So oh, drink oh. jazz hands. Drink. <laughs> so we will instead jazz give him jazz hands. hands. No, no, no. To quote to quote Krieger, jazz hands. Or uh, if if you prefer, if we saw if we saw this in a live audience, it'd be a case of stand up, turn around, bend, drop. <laughs> yeah, that counts. It's a full moon tonight. Drink. <laughs> Fucking it's drink. A full moon tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see what else we ha- let's see what else we have out of this person, so we can see how stupid that th- that they are. Um, let's take let's take a look at. Bitch I'm not going. I'm not going to read through all of what they get. All of what this person has, but let's see. We've got the whole. Let's talk about 40k, the tyranny of player choice. Uh, um, privilege and power in vampire. Drink. Yeah. So, fuck. Video, Video games, games erotic, erotic horror, 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 politics, politics of the grotesque. Grotesque. Mildred, mind if I read these off? Yeah, let's go. Let's go with it. Ethics Next and one. world building. Robots. Drink. There mm. are no. There are no safe spaces. As they should be. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ethics yeah, and character I'm... development. The asshole man child, and she uses us and. She, and to make things worse, she uses a character, or she uses a picture of fucking Star Lord Drake. Uh, that's a, that's gonna, a joke I'm gonna moment. die. I'm gonna fucking die tonight. Ethics and world building zombies. Yeah. Ethics and world building building monarchies. And using the uh, monarch, yeah, yeah, real cute. Ethics and world building the chosen one. I guess you never read the hero's oh, journey. Hallelujah. The devil's carnival <laughs> fe- fe- femme queer revenge. Oh my uh, god. The monster drink. is you. <laughs> the, the monster is you. Oh, does that count as a drink? No. The femme fatale and poison ivy. This counts as a drink. Yep. Oh, son of a. Mm. Doku here's hoping that you that you live that you live to see another day. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. Planning your adventure. I'm chugging. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm really hoping that I survive to see another day. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, scroll down. McCarthyism and the Resistance. Projection. Oh. Drink. Demonize ah. activists in their own party. No, that's just that's just what cults do. And currently, <laughs> you and yours are a cult. Yep. Project ethics and world ethics and world building, Lovecraft and cosmic horror. Uh, ethics and world building, vigilantes and superheroes. Uh, Game uh, media has an ethics problem. Okay, oh, that, yeah. that Moro Moro's a drink. drink. Oh, son of game bitch. mastering, keeping and cre- or creating and keeping player buy in. Uh, uh, that's probably also a drink. No, yeah, that's a drink for me because they're talk they're talking about game mastery and and I am I am fairly I am fairly certain that I have forgotten more about GMing than this person has learned. <laughs> Anyway, personal no, favorite games of 2017. Bro, Playing let's... Divinity Original Sin 2 as a queer anarchist. Oh, drink. That's definitely a drink. You know, I distinctly rec- I, I distinctly recall <laughs> seeing a bit of a story on Steam where somebody tried to play a city builder game and tried to and tried to play it using socialist values and the city ended up getting fucked up. And then they complained that th- that they couldn't do it. <clears throat> that got mocked it's... by basically everybody because, as we've established, socialism and communism does not work. Exactly. And if you want even the ultimate in... example of that, look at Venezuela. Yeah. It doesn't even work in games. And now Colombia is basically trying to blow up Maduro. I love it. Oh, I've seen man. I've seen conflicting stories. Some people say it was some people say it was a drone attack. Others saying that there was some sort of 
explosion that ha that happened at at a, a building, according to some firefighters. But um, I'm willing to bet. So I'm willing to bet somebody tried to do that. Mm -hmm. No, they would have done it anyway. After, well, ethics and world honest. building: the alien invasion story. Ethics and well, world. They, oh, they, they queer, they queering the hog father. Christmas as the other. Drink for tr Drink. for bringing in Terry Pratchett into this. Son of a bitch. Not only that, but bringing in the best version of death. This was a mistake. American it's, it's evangelism looks like an apocalyptic death cult. Whoa, projection! Drink. Yep. That's not projection. That is a, that is actually true. That is yep. actually, that actually seems true. I've read. I have read. I have read. Left behind, and yeah, that that is certainly uh, the case. But you know. But you know what? Two quoquet. Ethics in magical world building, gods and religion. Oh, God. Asking questions to improve your tabletop games. Jug. <laughs> How oh, I learned to God. stop worrying and become a better game master. That's where a little bud buzzwords. The Women of Evil Within 2, Part 2. The women drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How an indie goth song saved my life. Uh, so you've been publicly that, called uh, out. Do we, have to for, for, do we have to Ethics drink for Andy Goth Girl? It, please say no. Ethics in spooky world building. Shut up, Kevin Spacey. Uh, Cold of Chucky's twist ending takes a stab at queerness. Drink. 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 Ethics in magical world building. Fantasy bigotry. Drink. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical oh. world building magical education. Drink for using a picture of Hogwarts. Read something else you got yeah. on bombs. Exactly. <laughs> this was a mistake. <laughs> it was a horrible, horrible mistake. <laughs> Ethics in magical world building enchantments and mind control. Mm. Mm. I don't know about that one. Ethics and world build, <laughs> magical world building, necromancy, and that brings to mind, and Mildred, that brings to mind that meme that you've that you've showed us. Oh yes, necromancy. If you want to, you can bring your friends to life because your friends aren't dead, and if they're not dead, then no friends of mine. <laughs> Draven the Sorcerer, a D and D story. He looks like he looks like someone from tw the Twilight cast. Drink. The oh. end of Twin Peaks. Hey, Twin Peaks is all right. I like that. So this was Pride Seventeen. Wait, Psycho, can, Psycho Killers and me. Can, can they can they dance if they want to? <laughs> <laughs> Disney films and the glorification of straightness. Drink, oh, drink. Yeah. <laughs> School Patreon sponsor review antiviral. Yeah. Okay, so appar mm. apparently, apparently they want me. They would want me to donate to their Patreon, which, <laughs> as you all know, that ain't happening because I'm not getting paid. Yeah, no. but can we can we take a look at a look at their Patreon page anyway? See how much. See, I I didn't see a link for it. So Wait, I, let me I let me like, let me look, Walter. Yeah, Please, I, gotta, the end I want to see how many call. idiots are are paying this moron. Oh, oh, tell me that is the end of the article. Oh, wait a second. Oh, oh, what? No. Fifty-two. Fifty-two dollars. <laughs> Fifty-two patriot patrons. A hundred and seventy-three dollars per month. Eh. At least she cracked triple digits. <laughs> and she has a goal that is about six hundred and forty-seven dollars short. <laughs> For writing screens, uh, that's not okay, bad. Okay, okay. You guys, I like you. You you have made a good first impression. Milger's all right. Well, you everyone except for Milger has already made a good first impression. He's made a he made a good first impression when he started right of the transformation. No, I don't know why you like us. We're <laughs> we're we're an interesting bunch. 
Yes. We, but um, I, I think, I think it is, I think it's very safe to say that I will, in a few months, I will, I can certainly see myself running um, Wrath and Glory when the final version of that comes out, and uh, I will, and. I will not put any disclaimer about disclaimer about trigger warning material because the only trick the only trigger warning is the trigger warning before a is the trigger being pulled before a bolt round goes off. Yeah. Ah, that's the only trigger warning. Ah, you're generous. You don't get yeah. the joke, do you, Doku? Yeah. Um, no, I, I, it, it, I, I get the joke. I I have to deal with enough Lenos as it is. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, it seems um, Matt failed Tastic. Well, I wonder now if he's. I wonder after that freaking Facebook Facebook post, he's carrying around a tennis. Yeah, I wonder if he's carrying around a tennis racket and a bottle of Hennessy on him at all times now. Uh, Only tennis one racket. Bottle? Don't don't liken don't liken Jim Cornette to that degenerate. Actually, I don't, I I don't know. They have. They both have. De- they both have similar levels of. Political derangement syndrome. <laughs> yeah, but um, but, but I was re- I, I was uh, referencing Gangs Delicious from the Boondocks. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that, that reminds that reminds me that oh yeah, that Facebook post. Okay, let's read that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think oh. we, I think we went let over. Scroll, a little... Let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. Yeah, oh let's... yeah, we already read we already read that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's and a. The, but and the Gates Delicious Award for self incriminating goes to. Yeah. Huh. That, there is a very special place in hell for that asshole. Oh, yeah. And the, and the sad part is the cops haven't even bothered, cup, bothered, bothered arresting this prick yet. There's like overwhelming fucking evidence. What, what do you need? Like a uh, same. Well, not same. Uh, not same. Yes, yeah, same with um, Tune Critic Y2K, which I will explain that later. Now that that being that being said, I think I think it's time for I think it's time for a bit of wrap up because we have gone way past our usual time, and we have we are getting dangerously close to hitting a three hour run. Yeah, I'm barely. I could barely keep my damn eyes open. So only only three hours. Hmm. But we usually have it as a t- we usually have it as a two hour show. Um. So now, as far as what's co- as far as what's coming up down the pipeline, um, I have two scripts work worked out for my for my next two possible reviews. It's either going to be Blade Bind or The Void. I haven't figured out which one I'm going to do next. I'll probably just flip a coin on it. Um, I am going to continue doing RPG a day entries each day throughout the month of August, even on your even on his birthday. Yep. Um, Second City Dedicate. will probably be wrapping up before the month is out, and after that is is likely going to be either Doomsday is probably going to be Doomsday Crown. For from using Pathfinder Second Edition's playtest, then the Harlock Legacy, and then finally um, Zeitgeist. Ah, and as far as far, and of course, Second City will be will be return will be making its return on Wednesday at at eight on RV on RVT's Twitch channel. Thursday, nine, I will I will of course I will be at eight. Huh? It's it starts at six my time. Oh yeah. Oh wait, yeah, is, oh, wait. I'm think I'm thinking in central time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That is eight your time, right? Now <laughs> Thursday, I will be jo- I will be joining up with do- with possibly Doku, Nur- Nurgle, the angriest man alive, Warlord Routes, and 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 anybody else that happens to show up to go over the bullshit of the week with the stream of corruption. Um, the, I kind of, I kind of want to join the Scripture of Corruption now, but best not, best not to double dip, best not to double dip. Watch the stream of Corruption a few times, and then, and then decide whether, whether or not you want to come in. And in that case, it's not going to be up to me. It's going to be up to Nurgle. Yeah. Um, and of course, <laughs> and of course, on sun on Sunday, 
Come back for episode 10 of, Mo of Monastery Live. As far, hope as, as far as what's going to be planned, well, we'll be going, we'll, we'll certainly be going through plenty of salt. I might do, I might do a themed one and it's, but, um, and hope, and hopefully work does not freaking detain me like it's been the last couple weeks. Oh, by, by the way, um, Aaron, did you get the, did you relay that message over to, uh, Tara? What, what do you mean? As far as far as as far as whether or not she'd be whether or not she'd be willing to swing by, well, I was, I was yeah. I, the funny thing is, I did I did talk I did talk to her on Twitter earlier today, and apparently she's go, she's going through some health health issues. She's doing and plus she's doing she's doing a stream on her own. But next week, I and next week I I'll I can see if she wants to come on next week. Well, I, if I can get if I can get her or or Mer or Mercedes or the like for next week as a I don't know a birthday wish or something. That'd be that'd be. That'd well, be, that'd well be if, if if it's a birthday wish, I'm think I should I should definitely shoot for Mercedes. Yes. <laughs> I I will see we'll see how the dice lay on that. If if not, well if not, it'll probably be a fair bit of shit posting. I'll probably mention whether or not whether or not I got to, whether or not I got drunk on my birthday. Um, I'll probably I'll probably see if I can get I'll probably see if I can get some strong bows for that occasion because I like I have taken a liking to British ale. Blame <laughs> if you want to blame anybody for that, blame the brute squad. Ah, oh. they're the uh, they're the security at a uh, MetroCon, and they're 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 overall chill guys. Um, but until then. On on be on behalf of all on behalf of all the salt mind and the salt yet to be mined, on behalf of the living stack of comics, Doku, on behalf of the flamboyant flyer Flutter Guy, and on be on behalf of the of the big of the biggest head in Chicago, Aaron, I am Mill, an only gaming monk, and as always, stay frosty, everybody.